Hello and everybody and welcome back to this week's edition of the Tabletop Tavern. I am pleased to be here at this time slot with uh, a bunch, you know, this cast of wonderful people. Um, oh, I just literally the intro button again, guys. All right, let's do it again. <laughs> hey, One more time I'm feeling. From the top. <laughs> all right, all right. So, ten, <laughs> so... We had, we just had to fight through Jesus so, Christ, Mike. <laughs> so many, so many issues because Windows decided to update, uh, you know, half hour before we were supposed to get going. So Windows updates, the audio is messed up. This is messed up. The screens are messed up. Like nothing's working. Uh, so we're, we're par for the course right now. Um, it might actually switch a screen in a second here. Cause it's, uh, uh the intros on a timer. Um, I'm gonna get some music going. I'm gonna get some music going. But uh Did you say the intro's on a timer? Yeah, it automatically does the uh the transition when the um, Oh, you uh, have it set up to a macro to Yep, yep. I have a multifunction for that. You trigger wait a minute. So it, it, it might so it, smart. It might it might actually just do the transition and come back to the screen in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we got a button for that. <laughs> <laughs> I got five that says does. Who wants this action? Uh, I really hope it just goes back to the intro starting again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Please. I was really mad and really frustrated, but that kind of helped uh, clear the tension a little bit. Um, All right. Like, should we should we start again, guys? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. All right. Let's roll the intro again. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Everybody, roll welcome time. back to this Sunday's edition of Tabletop Tavern, episode 32, Deals and Decisions. Uh, this is a Pathfinder epic adventure that we have been on for 32 episodes uh, with this wonderful cast of players. Uh, my name is Mike. I'd like to welcome you back to uh, or in for the first time if you're joining us for the first time tonight. Uh, this is a Pathfinder epic adventure using the Rise of the Loon Lords uh, as a base with a lot of homebrew mixed in. Um, I would like to introduce to you Mihai. Uh, Yachts, Twitch, Yachts Twitch plays Mihai and we're going to get some... Uh, we're going to get him to let us know what he's thinking and what his character is thinking right now. So you've had a week to, to think about it. So let's um, let's get some thoughts from uh, Mihai. Oh, geez. You want thoughts from me? I don't I don't have many thoughts, nor does Mihai. So you're barking up the wrong tree, maybe. Um, Why do I do this? Why? I don't know. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Uh, me as a character, I'm thinking, OK, that's. You know, I've not played D&D or Pathfinder or anything like it before, but that's a dragon, so we're probably all dead, so we probably want to run away. It's in the title. Dungeons and Dragons. We've seen dungeons. We've not seen dragons. That makes me think the dragon is a bad thing. Uh, me as a character? Uh, yeah, Mihai, jeez, I don't know. He's he's ready to ditch most days, so this is no <laughs> different. I don't know. If, if this, <laughs> he's ready to ditch at the inn. <laughs> so when a dragon shows up yeah uh he may be willing to follow through with my gut instinct on this as a player okay. so we'll see all righty eat a bricks gamer mom luna our community manager hi hi um oh my gosh it's sunday again and i'm very excited um let's see what am i thinking right now uh eat bricks is like kind of in that half like oh my god giant flying lizard and oh my god giant flying lizard so uh <laughs> she's like half like i want to i want to learn how to train this thing and half like i need to get the hell out of dodge so that's kind of where she's at right now okay and i um i heard a rumor that in in real life you might be a fan of dragons yeah just a little bit <laughs> a rumor a rumor Yes, I have the uh, the collection of dragons, which you cannot see because it is behind my green screen. Uh, um, but you're in a forest right now. I know it's it's behind my forest. OK, All right. it's on it the other home. side of the forest. OK, yeah, it's on the other side of the woods. OK, don't don't ruin the illusion for me. Sorry. <laughs> it's Dab a very nice forest, by the way. It is. <laughs> Dab to us. Decider to us. So I'm thinking this was a pretty big margarita. I probably should put it to the side for now. I would That's like to say one thing before you get started. <laughs> okay. Too quick. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little disappointed in you. We were supposed to have this special start That's... from you, but. What? 
What are you talking about? <laughs> Disappointment yet again, Mike. Ah, oh, next time. Next time. Next time. Okay. All right. Whatever. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> um, my flow here. Um, my character is thinking. You know, he just got surrounded by a bunch of puppies that vigorously tried to lick him to no avail. Uh, and he's thinking he can take anything, so he's ready. He can take it. Gunner. That's a fireworm. We've heard many, many a, a, a tale of that when we were growing up. Came down from the mountains and set everything ablaze and stole our women and destroyed our crops. And, and it's time for some vengeance, baby. Vengeance. Hopefully, hopefully he's not a... As, as slippery as a greased eel or sure. a, uh, an oiled tuna. There you go. There you go. We, we got this. We got this. Alrighty. So, I think, uh, I think maybe perhaps a dice roll is in order? No. Pass. As your DM in Overlord, <laughs> I decree <laughs> with my divine, by my divine right. That. I worship Squeezes Christ. <laughs> oh All hail Squee. <laughs> Squee. Squeezes save us. <laughs> Squee has no power here. <laughs> uh, I'd like to use my I'd like to use my plus one from Katie. Go ahead. For this. Can I really? Yeah. Sweet. Oh, okay. Let's win. All right. All right. All right. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Hey. <laughs> That's fate, buddy. Ooh, those black die. Those are black die with no numbers on them. No, there's black writing on black 19. die. Nineteen. I used a bonus and I still failed. Yeah, <laughs> All right, that's well, why you so failed. Buddy. Let's mark that plus one as complete from Kitty Machin for. Yeah, go ahead and for, take that off for the list. Us. Uh, that is off the list now. Um, <laughs> okay. All righty. So decider twelve, <clears throat> Davdathas, in your best. Um, imitation of a sober person, could you please give us a uh, recap of last week? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, myself, uh, Milia, um, what's, what's the other characters' names? I don't remember all of them. Jesus. Anyway, <laughs> just kidding. Jesus. He is Millier. literally getting in character right now. Yeah, I just whew, channeling that warm up, folks. It's it was yeah, all it was that huge drink you saw him with a few minutes ago. I don't see it anymore. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What you mean this empty cup? Yeah, I know that thing. It's been sitting there for like a minute. Um, <laughs> so, all right. So last episode, uh, we started off with a bit of a sticky situation where uh, the whole the whole town found out Squee was in the village and uh, through his unconscious body. Uh, on the ground in front of us. Uh, Gunner immediately ran up for his protection. Thank you for that, Gunner. And uh, me and Mihai began to sweet talk the villagers. And uh, somehow, I still don't know how, we were successful. I don't in, know how either. Go ahead. I don't know how. <laughs> I made a we ruling. We were successful in calming them down and and getting them to not fully trust us and be okay with it, but at least not turn it into a riot. So after all that, we we uh, escorted all the townsfolk back to their homes and we turned in for the night. We all had a little little bit to drink on before heading to bed. And uh, the next morning we uh, we met with, oh gosh, was it the mayor or was it the sheriff? Yes. Yes, them. And <laughs> we... Uh, we decided we would head out to the sanatorium to get more information on the whole murder stuff and how people turn into guests and, you know, gather more information about what's been going on around town. And on our way, we encountered said puppies from earlier uh, who were really, really excitable, really willing to play with us. They're a little rough. Uh, we kind of roughhoused back with most of them. Um, and... Uh, Towards the end of the rough housing with the puppies, a very large... I don't know how large it is. Mike, how large is it? What, the puppy? No, the um, the the scaly, black, winged, reptilian thing. <laughs> it's big. <laughs> it's big. Okay, so a very large, scaly, black, reptilian thing with wings uh, flew over us and landed uh, a little bit behind us. 
And that's where we last left off. Wow, I didn't think I could offend Luna that much. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I had a quick internet issue, sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, we thought you rage quit. <laughs> I did. I was like, what did I say? And that's where we left the story. Do do. No. She gone. No, had a had a quick issue with the modem. The cat decided to knock it over. So that's oh. fun. Oh, I love cats. <laughs> I think yeah, Looney might be getting a little bit of lag tonight, but we'll push through it. Right? Yep. Good. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's the first technical difficulty we've encountered tonight. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, nothing else has gone wrong to this point. So nope, everything's totally fine. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Chat, what are, you, are you guys ready out there? These pro streams? Um, one thing I'd like to mention before we get going tonight. Uh, you guys can see uh, Streamlabs. Just uh, drop that Google Docs form out in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, one of the way, the only way we can get better is by getting feedback from the community on things we can do better. Um, so if you guys want to go click that link at some point and give us some anonymous feedback, we would love to have it. That's the only way we can get better is if we get the feedback from you guys on uh, what we're doing good and what we're doing not so good. Um, so we'd really appreciate it if you guys do that. Um, but I think it's time to get going. I think it's time to get going out there. You guys ready? Ready. Do it. Chat, yeah. you guys ready? F's in chat for the uh for the party here. <laughs> you spelled it wrong. Scandalous. <laughs> Captain. You're spelling like me. You're typing like me, guys. Come on. All right. Captain. <laughs> Captain. <laughs> I kinda like it. I That's like what it I'm too. gonna name my child. Captain. <laughs> Captain. If you ran this by your wife. Just kidding. No. Try it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's all right. When she comes storming past the green screen, we'll know he just discussed it with her. <laughs> You're waiting for like a, a pot to just fly through your yeah, like a, when an arm reaches in and like oh, smacks shit. me. Chocolate that flying yeah, through I was gonna say, and crack me high upside the head. Really? <laughs> Who throws a shoe? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, serious, serious business time, guys. Serious, okay. serious back business. To it. Ready? Oof. No. When last okay. we left off, a creature had landed in front of the party. This creature was a giant winged lizard uh, with four legs, spikes coming out of its uh, spine. Uh, its head had spikes. When its maw opened, there was long teeth with a acrid smell coming out uh, from its mouth as as saliva dripped to the ground and hissed as it hit. The creature looked at all of you, stepped back, took a deep breath, and it stopped for a second. Slowly, the creature releases its breath with a whoosh, like a bellows emptying. emptying. The head of the creature alights on Dabdathas in a raspy, deep, and throaty voice he calls out. I invoke the ancient rite of parlay, Coleric. I extend safety to you and yours for the duration of this conversation. No more, no less. <laughs> I have an offer. Yes, an offer for you. If we come to terms, you may go in peace. If not, this can resume. Well, um, do you accept my that. terms? I think I prefer that. So I kind of look at the rest of the party. I think I speak for all of us when I say, yes, I agree to the terms. But the terms of not dying immediately. Yeah, I, I'm okay. I, with I'm that. all for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As you stare at the large imposing creature in front of you, it ponders you all. Its gaze swings back and forth over you. Large yellow and clearly intelligent eyes appraise all of you. Well, this is happening. I'm like slowly backstepping towards the party. The town of Sandpoint. The town of Sandpoint has been plagued of late with deaths and other unpleasantness, hasn't it? It has. 
what if I told you I had a really good idea of where the attacks are originating? And I could give you three steps to solve the problem. Well, I'd say that'd be fantastic, but what do you have to gain from it? I request a favor. Go on. This favor, it's nothing big, really. There's a certain holy man in town. Majestic armor. That sort of thing. Well, he arrived there recently, and I wish a conversation with him. All you must do is simply relay a message to him and my whereabouts. I believe I know the man you speak of. I can do this. Are you sure you know him? I believe I do. I, uh, I nudged out to Thos and go, he means Moat, the one with a nicer armor than you. Yes, yes, Gunner, I know, I know. <laughs> the dragon hearing this says, well, the creature's hearing this says, ah, so he calls himself Moat now. Interesting. Uh, Mike, can I get a knowledge, dungeoneering, knowledge, religion, knowledge, survival, yep. knowledge, anything? <laughs> <laughs> You said dungeoneering is good? Yes. Can I do that roll as well? That's a 13. Yep. Could I also get in on that? Yes, 12, you can. 13. Sorry. I'd like to pass on that. That's You're a 22. Busy. Yeah. Gunner and Mihai, you know this is a dragon. Very clearly a dragon. Uh, it's a black chromatic dragon. Peter Bricks. You recall from your memories. Um that these particular dragons uh, like to frequent swamps. Um, they like to feed on dead things. If they, if they kill something, they take it and they bring it back to their swamp and they let it fester and rot before consuming it. <laughs> hey, you, I, uh... also, you also know that they don't have the traditional breath weapon of lore, and instead of fire spewing forth from their mouth, acid comes forth in the cloud. And you also know that they are typically more wicked and cunning than the, uh, some of the other sets of dragons. I am not going to relay all of that information to everybody right now. Um, I'm going to... Um, uh, I'm going to kind of... Uh, first, I'm going to move that so I can see where I am in relation to uh, Davdathos. I'm going to kind of move up to uh, and and be like, be very careful with what you're dealing with. Well then, I believe we can relay this message for you. Seems like a simple task. Do you have a name, Mr. Dragon? That's exactly what I was about to say. Names. <laughs> My names. Names have power, Davdathos. Names do have power, little one. You may call me Midnight. Midnight. And I'm assuming uh, Moat knows who Midnight is? Oh, he knows. Very well. What is the message you wish us to relay? First, how about a sign of good faith on my part? Would that put you at ease a little bit? You haven't eaten us yet. That's pretty good faith for us. Still. I will give you the first of my clues before I send you off. Very well. I won't say no. 
this is how I'd like the situation to play out for you. I'll give you the first of the clues right now, and you'll complete it. You'll come back to me, and I'll give you the second clue. And then what I'll require you is you to deliver the message to Moat. <laughs> and then you can return to me with him, and I will give you the third clue. I'm pretty sure it'll solve the mystery of Sandpoint for you. So, Mr. Fireworm, Midnight. Um, Fire. Fire is for the if, petty ones. If, if perhaps we do tell the shiny armored one, Moat, that you're here and he doesn't want to come talk to you, what then? You've completed your, your end of the bargain. Sure. Well. Hey, Mike, I'm going to cast Detect Evil. Okay. A glowing presence of evil shines forth from this creature. He is clearly evil. Oh. Um, can I cast a spellcraft to see if I know what he casted? Wait, Gunner did? No. Well, yeah, to see if I know what Gunner cast. Yes. Okay. <sighs> One plus four is five. I don't see how you could fail this, honestly. You honestly, have the spell. You know the spell, do you not? You know I the do. spell and you use it. I'm going to say yeah. it. I mean, I... <laughs> Even though you roll the one plus four for a five, <laughs> it'd be more like a perception check just yeah, to see if he I would, even notices him uttering the words or yeah, moving his hands. Right? That's that's kind of what I'd probably go with because it's an Orison <laughs> okay. and you know it by, you know what I mean. It's part of your nature essentially. So, are you gonna eat Moat? My business is between Moat. He's do honor bound and duty bound to come to me. What happens between us is really none of your concern. I'm not. I, I get that. And just call it, you know, resident curiosity, because, I mean, let's be honest, our other holy man here doesn't like Moat too much, so if you're going to eat him, you might just make his whoa. day. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who said um, I don't like Moat? <laughs> how about if we let this very large dragon go about his business, and we just leave him alone at this point? Midnight, I agree to your terms. So I will send you off with the first clue. The road you travel, the road you were traveling before you landed here, and your destination that you previously had hold the next clue. Do not let the man deter you at the door from your current mission. Very well. Before and you where go. Might we? Before you go. I must warn you, do not make an enemy of me. I have kept to my own in this countryside, feeding in the swamps, but my, my attention could certainly fall on the town of Sandpoint. I am not one to be trifled with. To be trifled with. Do we have an understanding? We do. Okay. So the creature takes a step back. You guys know it would be a black dragon now. It takes a step back. Rears up. His wings rise up, uh, behind him and he launches into the sky. And slowly, you know, as the distance goes, he, he gets smaller and smaller and disappears. Just a quick interjection, guys. Uh, Windows is broken. The, uh, the background music that we typically play. Um, it's not playing tonight, so sorry about that. So instead, I will sing the entire duration. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I could sing for the entire duration. No, you have a job yeah. to do. Okay, no. all right. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, so he's, he's flown away now? He has flown away. 
Okay, an obvious tension just releases from my body. Just, oh boy. Why are you so nervous? Did you not see that thing? Why did Dude, he ask for you that? specifically? That's another great question. Did he just know you were a cleric? I'm assuming he noticed what I was, yeah. Well, he could see your garb. And my holy symbol, which I'm holding in my hand, and I just hold it up to them. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. What does well, he want with Moat? I, that is not my problem. <laughs> He's gonna He's kill gonna, him, isn't he? He's gonna well, eat him. Well, we'll find out when he has us deliver the message. But until we get that message, I don't think we should make any assumptions. I guess at the end of the day, it is Moat's decision whether or not he meets. Indeed. We and won't we directly always, be sending him to his death. We could always find out more from Moat. Sounds like he's had dealings with this creature in the past. Yeah, what if he's indebted to it somehow? Does it matter to us why he needs to meet with the dragon? Well, perhaps he's in business with it, and if he's evil... Well, Moat has we didn't get that us. feeling from Moat, right? I do want to make sure that Moat comes out okay, but... For now, I'll just assume everything's going to be great. What if the only thing that would have saved him is his sword and shield? Ah, oh, don't say that. <laughs> what if the dragon's what was eating everybody? I feel mm. like a dragon wouldn't even leave a corpse, though. And the footprints we would have found. Not really would humanoid. Been, would have been quite different. Oh. Anyway, we should probably head on. It's okay that we continue, right? I believe so. Okay. Um, no time limit on returning to Moat? He said we should probably follow through and complete the first clue. Then he would give I'm us I'm sorry, guys. One. I forgot to give you one line that that you need. You need so. Um, okay. Oh. Let's um, rewind. <laughs> does he fly back over us and just yell does. it? <laughs> He's like, "Oh, by the way, I forgot." <laughs> Whoosh! <laughs> All right. So the message you need Come to deliver. To <laughs> the message you need to deliver to Moat is midnight calls. The time is now. If you don't arrive by midnight hour of the second day, the pact is broken. Not ominous at all. Did that dragon just show something about a pact? I did hear that. That's crazy, man. Listen, I'm just saying this is a way for you to get rid of Moat. I know you really don't like him. Hey, Moat and I have settled our differences. Yeah, I know you settled your differences, but it, this way you don't have to deal with them anymore. I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. Wish. Well, no, I mean, Gunner's shield. got a point. <laughs> mm. but, I mean, you took his sword and shield anyway. I was saving his sword and shield for him. And you did what with it? I was robbed. But what did you do with the sword and shield? I kept it. In, I tried to return it to him. And when he didn't. Want it back at the moment. I kept it in my room for safekeeping. So you, you took so it from him and kept it in your room. And, you know. He left it behind. I was trying to rescue it. Dabdathos, I'm not judging what you and yours do around this land. It's okay. I understand. You're you're my friend, and I'm I'm going to fight for you anyway. I'm gonna nudge, <laughs> nudge you. I'm, Watch this. <laughs> I'm I'm just saying <laughs> that you'll you'll be back to. The number one holy man, other than Father Xantis in the city, after we're done. You'll still play I've second never desired. <laughs> You'll still play second fiddle. I've never desired to be the best. Only to be useful. And with that, I just turn my horse towards the path and continue on. Got uh, Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Puppy. You guys just all completely locked out for me. Maybe I am having internet issues tonight. I, I have no, you locked, locked up for me too. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Sorry out there. We're gonna we're gonna continue as best we can. Um, we're gonna do the best with what the internet lets us do. So, um, Devathos, you were you gonna turn your horse and continue down the path? Yes. And then out of character, I was asking that uh, there was still a puppy on the map. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> the puppies yeah. fled when. Your friends stop by. 
Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I continue say, on the, the path. The, the hyena just like <laughs> casually sat and waited <laughs> like, for us to have this conversation, He's looking like, down at his little wristwatch. They were pat him, on, Come on. pat him on the head. Good puppy. Good the, puppy. The hyena was smarter than you guys. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so, Dabdathis, you're going to continue down the path towards the, uh, the sanitarium. Yes. Um, okay. About a half, uh, you know, a couple hours later, um, you guys get to the sanitarium. Um, it's not a huge building. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's good enough. Uh, it's, it's probably, you know, maybe 100 feet long by, um, you know, 60 feet wide. Uh, looks to be like multiple floors. Um, and there is, um, it's a squat stone building. Um, it's got a stone flag roof and, uh, um, and it's an area known as Ashen Rise. Um, so, uh, there is a front door. Let me see if I can get a map up for you guys so you can see it. Um, we should probably knock. My God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let me do this. I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to share a map with you and then I'm going to open up a little bit. Okay. Oh, you know, all right. So when you guys arrive, help me, please. Let me unlock. There we go. These pro streams guys, I'm telling you tonight is awesome. I'm so <laughs> glad everyone was here for our first stream ever. <laughs> this is our first stream ever. <laughs> what are you going to do? Right. Um, yep. okay. So when you walk up to the building, uh, you, uh, you come up uh, out of a path and, uh, you walk up and you see this building and, uh, uh, there are steps on the front door in a front door that you see. I dismount. Okay. Glance at the others and head towards the front door. Okay. Am I able to move myself to that map? Oh, I got to do that for you. My fault. Like I said, these pro streams tonight. Anyway. Pro streams. Uh, pro streams. Pro streams. <laughs> pro streams. <laughs> I love it. Uh, you guys can put yourself as you see fit. Oh, boy. We're tiny. We're tiny compared to the squares on the map. <laughs> we are really tiny. If you scroll in a little bit, you'll realize that each big square is really just four small squares. It is. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You just got to. I've readjusted. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So, Gunner, that's actually a, a veranda. Uh, my fault. With a railing on the outside. So, the door is a little ah. bit closer uh, right there. So, you see the door uh, right to the south of you. A veranda. Gunner's one weakness. <laughs> I thought that was uh, what are they called? The little things with the roofs and the outside? A gazebo. gazebo. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was my weakness. Wow, maybe that's the second weakness. There we go. Oh. Gunner has two weaknesses? Yeah. I mean, pointy bits hurt too. <laughs> All right. What All right, I'll follow him up. Up onto the veranda. All right, let me know what you guys are doing. I knock on the door. Thank you. <laughs> Couple seconds go by, no response. I knock again on the door. As he does that, I peek around the side. Okay. Um. So this is like uh, you would walk up, uh, you know, like a little uh, deck or veranda outside the the thing. Um. If you look down to the side of the building, you can see about. 30 to 40 feet down and it kind of L's off. Um, and I think they have a, there's like a, you know, like a Weber barbecue down, down there. That's where they, they, they grill the meat. So a barbecue. A barbecue. I proceed. <laughs> <laughs> Check okay. for traps. Uh, Gunner, give me a perception, please. Yes, sir. Or anybody standing right by Gunner over there to the, uh, so everybody, but, um, 20 plus one for 21. Uh, not one. <laughs> Man, that happens in like all my perception rolls. <laughs> it really does. 17. All right. So, Edabrix, uh, uh, Mihai, you're, you're <clears throat> occupied, but looking down the steps to make sure you don't trip as you walk up the steps. Or, 
you know, you're a little Ro- Robes can be trippy. <laughs> robes left can foot. be trippy. Right <laughs> foot, lift the rope. Left foot, okay. <laughs> Gunner and Edrix, as you listen, uh, it sounds like quick footsteps come over to the door. Uh, the door opens up, and a man stands before you, uh, quite irritated. Uh, you can just you can tell this just by the look on his face. Uh, the man's man wearing a robe. Um, he's got a headdress, like a fancy hat on, uh, that <gasps> falls down on his shoulders and comes around. Excuse down, me. And like comes what? Come down <laughs> under his chin. Um, like a what? Like a fancy robe. I mean, a fancy oh. hat. Oh, oh, okay. Now you get me. Okay, can I move on? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. <laughs> what? What do you want? Hi. And what do you want? Why are you knocking on the door here? Good day. Looking up from my feet. Whoa, nice hat. I don't have time for this. What? Either state your business or be gone. We're here on a mission. I what? turn to look at Eda Bricks and I motion her forward. <laughs> Why me? I'm not uh, for this foolishness. What is, what, what, you're a mission. What, what mission? What are you doing here? Uh, hi. Um, so we're coming over from the town of Sandpoint because you may or may not have heard that there's been some issues over there. I think everybody's heard that. Okay. Uh, we were hoping you might be able to help. Help with what? I run a sanitarium. What? We were sent here to, to consult with you. By who? Mayor Devrin. Do you have any credentials? Uh, they didn't give us a sign or anything that said, you know, heroes of Sandpoint. So you're just gonna have to take our word for it. Give me an intelligence Instead of game. Were, were we given? We were given a note or something. You were we? given a note. Yep. Okay. Who has the note currently? Davdathos might be me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whereas I remembered, I have the note. Can at this point, can I like yell to? Dave or something and be like, hey, you have that note, right? Sure. Okay. That's what I'll do then. I'll I'll poke my head around the corner and see if I can see Davidathos. Be like, Davidathos! Hey, what's up? Uh, that there's a there's a guy here. Uh the note. Oh, yeah, hold on. Wasting my Coming time. Back. I have so much to do in there. So much to do. Oh, hey, how's it going? I was told to give you this. I, I show him the note. So he grabs, he snatches out of your hand, unrolls it, looks at it, and just shaking his head. Just, just, why do they waste my time? Why? 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 And he gives it back to me. Okay, come on. What, what do you need to, what do you want to know? So he invites you into the, um, inside the sanitary. I'm That's sorry. Inside. That was the wrong door. This is the door to the east of you. I mean, the, uh, yeah, to the east of you. Um, so he invites you in. He's like, come on, come, come. He like grudgingly invites you in. So. Yeah, I sat down with him. Yep. All right. Uh, so you walk in. Uh, the, uh, the, this room contains a desk and three chairs, two to the west and one to the east. Um, a cord hangs from a hole in the southern wall above a sign that reads, ring for service. Um, this is what you think to be a reception room. Um, and he, uh, and, uh, he's like, well, all right, well, come in here, come in here. We'll, we'll sit down at the table and just, and we'll talk about this. And so he opens the door to the, uh, the south of him. And, uh, when you guys walk in, uh, there's a couple tables. So he sits down at the table. All right. Sit down at the table. Yep. Same. I'll sit. Okay. I suppose I'll sit too. Give me um. Sit check. Give me a sense <laughs> motive, Dabdathos. Very well. Eight plus eight is sixteen. Dabdathos, he looks very twitchy to you. He looks like uh, antsy and very twitchy. Um, that does make sense, given how he's busy kinda... he keeps saying he is. And uh, just, you know, you notice 
it's a sense of wary and uh, a sense of, uh, you know, just like twitchiness coming from him. Okay. Crystal math. Not even <laughs> once. <laughs> okay. So what do you, what do you want? What are you specifically looking for? If I may be honest, I seriously don't remember why we're here. Yeah, on, we were sent here to get information. Oh, this is at a, at a game, right? Like, I don't recall. Give me an intelligence check, all of you. This is sure. ridiculous. Otherwise, this is going to be a really awkward yeah, conversation. Yeah, it's going to keep going. 14. Six. 20. 12. Uh... Davdathos and Edabrix, uh, you remember that Aaron Habe is treating one of the the um, one of the people, the last people alive that were bitten by uh, the creature that was taken from the farm. Um, That's what I thought. And um, the you know Mayor uh, Devron and Sheriff Hemlock sent you here to um, because Aaron Habe has been inspecting the body oh not the body i'm sorry uh inspecting the patient and uh wanted you guys to interview the patient and get as much information from Aaron. Uh, what Aaron heron i'm sorry Aaron habe has gleamed from examining the patient um to try to get more information on the actual situation all right was that graced what's up graced the name g-r-a-s-t -E. Aaron Habe, H-A-B-E. No, I, I realized that. Uh, Grace, yes, yeah, name. yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. The patient okay. is graced, yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. Okay. Um, so we're here because uh, we have been sent out to talk to you about uh, what you've managed to learn from Graced and, and see if we might be able to talk, uh, talk with your patient and get, see if there's any more information that we can find out also um find out if there's any you know if you might have any idea how they're being turned into ghasts and what might be doing it i have to explain it to you guys and it, i should be down there working i should be be working with my patient now i have to explain this to you guys this is they well, what do they expect of me what do we, let me do my job. What if you explain it to us while you're doing your job? What if we help you do your job, thus lessening your load, offering you some value, and in return, you, uh, you give us the information we need? Finally, Miha. you can have a little bit of work off your plate. Miha, give me a sense of motive. A sense of motive? Yeah. Uh, 16. Um, you, you think he's very reluctant in wanting to show the patient to you. Um, he responds, he's like, it's a, it's a touchy situation. You know, the, the patient is not in a good spot and it, it just, not, I'd not prefer not to. How? It, is the patient still alive? Yes. Aaron, if I may. As you might be able to tell, I am a man of Desna. I do possess her healing power. Perhaps I can be of assistance to you. I doubt Davdathos. I don't think he wants you anywhere near. I don't think he wants to show us the body. <laughs> I mean, I don't know with how busy you. When seem, you say that, Mihai, you guys notice he ner he nervously looks back at the door behind him. Uh, I'm gonna make eyes at Gunner. I stand up and, and I'm gonna start stand up from the, the table. Door. Yep. As you get up, Gunner, uh, he starts to bolt, and he goes, "Help! Help!" And uh, he runs towards the. I'm gonna open it up so you guys can see where he's running towards. Um, so he starts to run, uh, towards uh down south. Um, it looks you from there. You can you think it might be like uh, uh steps to go down uh, over there. Daze um, takes one standard round to cast. Can I hit him before he leaves? Um, like if I was successful on my roll, would I be able to daze him before he leaves the room? Six seconds. Yep. You could. Uh, okay. You could can try. I start, that? You can start to. I'm going to let you. Uh, a couple things are going to resolve at once. Okay. 
Sure. Um, so sure. you begin to cast the spell, right? Um, I gotta grab just some tokens real quick. Um, my intent was like as I stood up to start trying to subdue him somehow, then you can take that as however you want. Well, if you're gonna cast phase, that would be your attempt to, to subdue him, right? For sure. Yeah. yeah so he's just that, exactly. Okay. All right. Um, so let me grab this real quick. Um, all right. First, I'm going to have everybody roll initiative. Mihai, you're going to act first, um, and then as a surprise round, and then everything else is going to go after that. So 15 plus three for 18 for me. Uh, 16 plus 10 for 26. Okay. 10 plus 1 for 11. Oh, hold on. Mine's having trouble rolling. Nine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Mihai, so as you begin to, ca uh, you cast the spell. Um, I don't think I have a token for him. Uh, as you cast the spell, you, uh, you know, you, uh, this, you know, you launch it at him and uh, he, st he stops and he's stunned for a second. Uh, from from the left hand side, uh, the western side of you, uh, two doors swing open, and uh, uh, two uh, men stand. Uh, I'm sorry, two creatures stand. Uh, uh, but uh, they start to come out the doors, and with that, we're going to be on initiative. So I'm going to forward it back up to Mihai uh, because what he did was on a surprise round. So um, I want to show you the two creatures that are coming out, though. Um. This lanky man sneers as he draws a sword. Tiny horns and a barbed tail reveal that he's something more than human. Um, so the creature, uh, well, the person standing there uh, is wearing black armor, um, has white spiky hair uh, and like a, a small sword and a tail coming back. His uh, his fingers end in claws. Um, give me a um, knowledge local, knowledge local or dungeoneering, everybody. Pass. Uh, <laughs> I rolled Dungeoneering of 17. Dungeoneering of 17. Nope. It's both the same for me, so I'm going to roll local. <laughs> 19. <laughs> nice. Okay. You know this is a tiefling. This is it's pretty common knowledge. Um, uh, but these are two tiefling men that have come out of the rooms to the... Uh, uh, and they are going to... Oh, oh, they are going to be coming to the doors right here and right here. Uh, so, Mihai, you will be first to act, sir. Oh. Should I move myself into a valid square? Um, I'm going to call that fine. Okay. When you move, you know, try to try to okay. grab. Um, put so, I'll put, the, I'll put these guys on a valid square, too, so to help. Oh, okay. Um, I got to reveal the rooms if those doors are open now, so no. I can see where that guy is. Oh, there, that's enough. So the door is actually right there, and this door Split. is right here. So I'm gonna put him kind of in a half slot right there. Okay. So it is your turn, Mihai. Okay, I'm going to uh, five step towards the door that we entered. This room, uh, that'd be northward. Okay. And, uh, hmm, I'm going to try out, uh, a new spell, Infabulate. <laughs> oh, yes, I know this one. <laughs> I'm going to Glitter Dust the northernmost, uh, Tiefling. Okay. In an attempt to blind him. Okay. Now, I do have a bonus, uh, for my will save dc on this yep i have a conjuration school bonus of plus one to all conjuration so when i roll this it may not account for it but my spell dc should be 17 so uh, with the modifier um try and roll the modifier up too and see if that works okay so i love I how you have it labeled modifier. i love how you labeled it as infabulate of course i did <laughs> It said uh, DC 16. We'll just know. I'll remind you every time I cast something in the school of conjuration. Okay. What what you can do is go into the conjuration spells offline and add a plus two to them manually. 
in the back end. I'll show you how to do that later. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, um, so, so the creature has, uh, um, failed his, uh, his save. Uh, so do they automatically get blinded me high or do they, um, yeah. So how it works is if they fail their save, they take a minus 40 to any stealth checks, uh, and they are blinded. They can attempt a save or a new save, uh, at the end of their, uh, at the end of the rounds. Okay. All right. I'm um, going so to... once initiative comes back around to him, he can do an action blinded and then attempt to save at the end of his turn, as how far as I understand. How many rounds? It does not have a limit, it seems. They okay. just continually get to check until they break it. Okay. Or die. Or die. Or die trying. <laughs> Death by glitter. <laughs> Death by glitter. <laughs> In Fabulate, go. <laughs> you're fabulous all right when you're done you can click that uh i'm I'm going to uh yeah i'll, I'll end my turn there by shouting to the party look out and then click that button in the combat tracker to oh shoot i didn't have it open uh done all Did right work nice uh so he gets another save right we just uh, said if that. it's gonna end his round if it's the last thing he does yeah okay. i'm gonna sneeze at the end of the rounds That went away. I hate that. His DC would be 17 still, I believe. Yep. All right. So let's do a saving throw for him. And that's will save? Yes. All right. Why can't I find it? Because there is no save from glitter. <laughs> there is no. Yeah, it's true. All right. We've all been there. <laughs> uh, he is currently still blind. He's, you guys watch and he's, he's like trying to rub stuff out of his eyes and he's just kind of, he's just kind of flailing around right there. Um, and Edebrex, it is your turn. All right. So seeing that one has just come out the door in front of me, I'm going to reach for my short sword and swing it at him. Okay. And that is a 22 to hit. Does a 22 hit? Did you drop it on him? I did. Hmm. Oh, maybe because they're not labeled as this. Okay. Uh, that does hit, ma'am. Yes. Sweet. And... So Edebrick, seeing the creature run out of the room next to her, uh, grabs her sword and stabs back into the creature's abdomen for how many points of damage? Um, well, it would be nice if that actually decided it was going to count as a roll um that's for two <laughs> two points of damage so as yeah. the you know the sword kind of pokes uh and drives off the side of the creature's armor at, or the uh the figure's armor um and uh and uh it um uh you know it draws a little line of blood all right and uh so as the as uh the figure standing there gorgeous you fool recover yourself we, we we have to take care of these for the master. And uh, he is going to take a... Uh, uh, he draws a short sword, Edebrix, and he tries to bring it down on a uh, chop across uh, your uh, your head for a natural one. So give me Ooh. a d20 roll, please. Ooh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That is a 20. You. Somebody found my dice. <laughs> <laughs> You rolled a 20? Oh, I've never... I, I did ne roll a 20. <laughs> Dick punch! Groin punch! Groin punch! Groin punch! <laughs> I think if it's a 20, the player should just decide what happens. Right. I agree. <laughs> just it's for groin punch. If it's a 20, Edebrix just kills him outright. No, no, that's not what happened. Oh, God. So oh, as he slips and slits his throat. <laughs> uh, so as he swings his sword, um, it's like a weird thrust and a little bit of the blade cuts his uh forehead uh and uh he is uh as you watch Edebrix as you're looking up at him uh blood starts to pour in his eyes and oh uh I'm going to need a d, d I'm going to need a d4 roll from you Edebrix <laughs> okay. What happened wow. to him? <laughs> this is amazing. amazing. <laughs> four. four. He nice. is blind for four rounds. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even I do anything good. that time. <laughs> um, Round one. 
both blind. <laughs> I think we're doing okay. Uh, we're doing great. You guys are doing good. Um, and he's like, oh, my eyes. <laughs> Gunner, it's your turn. All right, man with the fancy hat. Uh, That's me. Rather fancy hat. So oh, I'm right. going to, he is currently right here, Gunner. Okay. 10, 15, 20, 25. Oh, did that days ever happen? 35. How did he get so far in one turn? Damn it. Because he had a, he, he cut and run before you guys, but he is standing over there and currently dazed. Okay. That's. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 35, 40. That's 40 exactly. Uh, let's go for a tackle. Okay. Um, uh, pin that man to the ground. Okay, you're just trying to subdue him. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna wrap him up like a uh, slippery eel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or a sly mongoose. A sly mongoose. <laughs> uh, give me one second. I just uh, got uh, gonna give me a CMD. I mean B. Sorry. Got it. Um, where is things and stuff? Oh, that's a natural one plus seven is eight. You fumbled? Okay. I'm going to say at this point, you missed him as you were running by and you just banged into the wall. Like you, okay. you shouldered into the wall and you bounced off and you just kind of shaking for a minute there. Uh, but we're going to end your turn at that point. Okay. Um, oops, sorry. Dab to thoughts, it's your turn. I guess Gunner didn't give away his dice yet. It's Shut true. up, you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so um, I'm basically within melee range of this one uh, tiefling, right? Yes, you are. Okay. So I'm going to take a five foot shift around him. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to draw out my morning star in the process. And as I draw it out, I'm going to try and bash it across his side. Okay, so Dabdathas is seeing uh, the opportune target right in front of him, uh, shifts out of his seat and moves towards the wall uh, for the room that uh, the creature has come out and swings for AC. I'm going to use my plus one from Manda Manda. Thank you very much. For a six plus four is ten. Okay, uh, so as he uh, as Dabdathas is getting out of the seat and trying to shuffle into the side, um, he just, he's unable to connect a, uh, a land a blow on this, uh, on this, uh, tiefling. Um, the guy is standing there blind and uh, unable to defend himself. Um, uh, but for some reason, Dabdathos's, uh, attack hits the wall. Usual. All right. When you're done, you can hit that little button. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. It's me. Hi, me. Hi, your turn. There you go. Oh man. So, Mihai, as you um, survey the scene, you see Gunner down, uh, kind of around the corner down there. You heard a thunk as he hit the wall. Uh, you're not quite sure what's going on. Uh, you look in front of you, and both of the tieflings appear to be, you know, blind. Um, you know your your spell has, you know, blind one of them, and the other one is uh, is currently uh, flailing all around, trying to wipe blood out of his eyes. Um, that's where you're at. Uh... Do I have any sense if uh, Aaron's still in the room? Um, you can't tell from where you're current. Um, no, you can't tell. You can't tell from where you're currently standing. So around the corner, out of sight, anyway. Right, right. So, okay. so Gunner, you can see all down here, but the party can't. The rest of the party can't. All right. Anything else down there or no? Um, you see a a, a door uh to your. Uh, on the southern, like this, uh, sub, kind of like adjacent to the southern wall. Um, okay. And it looks like uh, that you think that's where he was running towards. Copy. Yep. Uh, so what would I know about these tieflings? Um, <clears throat> like, are, can I reason with them? Are they just straight up evil beasts, or are they humanoid and logical? And do you have any associated skills that would help you determine this? Uh, those are two different actions. If you're trying to determine information about them. That's one thing. If you want to try to convince them to stand down, that would be a complete. I want to second. convince them to stand down. Is my give me a angle. give me Can a I... uh, uh, give me um, uh, diplomacy. 
Okay. Um, I'm just going to look through my notes and add a bonus. Uh, I'll use an advantage roll from Brimble. Oh, okay. I really want to hit this. Uh, so I'll roll my first diplomacy of 13 plus 6, 19. Pretty good roll. Don't think I'll beat it. <laughs> uh, 12 plus 6 for 18. So I'll take the 19, obviously. Okay. Uh, um, role play and- for me. Yes, I'm going to show up to these two tieflings. I'm going to say, look, your uh, so-called leader just ran in fear. I suggest you stand down. Obviously, you know we're powerful enough to take you on. Uh, stop fighting and you'll be spared. Okay. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn, Miha? Um... No, I think that's it. I'm just going to stand here and uh, actually, perhaps I'll load my crossbow just in case they don't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They can hear the ominous click, click, click of me reeling <laughs> in a bolt. <laughs> okay. So, Gordis, the, the one closest to you, uh, the one Mihai, you that hew his spell, um, says, um, Gurnak. We can't fight this. This is not one we can fight. I say we put down our arms. And uh, he drops his sword to the ground and he kind of, you know, tries to get down on the ground, but he, you know, pitches over in the process and he lands on his stomach. Peter Briggs, your turn. I'm going to ready in action um, and see if the one in front of me decides whether or not he is going to surrender. Um, and if he moves to attack, then I will take my turn. What will you do on your turn? Will you attack? I will attack him with my short sword. Okay. All right. When you're done, hit that butt. Gurnak's standing there with, uh, the blood in his eyes. Um, you know, he, 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 he kind of like, you think what he, you know, he, he's trying to look around the room and try to, and try to, you know, figure out the situation. And he goes, he drops his sword and he tries to, um, you know, he, he puts his hand on the door jam and he says, I give up. I give, I give. Um, I forgot to take one action. I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, we'll do it after this. So he, he gives up and he, uh, he just kind of stands there, eat a bricks non-threateningly. Um, but he's just like trying to stay up by holding on to the, the door jam. Um, he's disoriented because of the blood flowing through his eyes. All right. He and he dropped his sword on the ground. He did. Can I kick it away? I'll allow it. Yeah, if you want that to, be, if you want to jump in on there and kick it away. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Then that's what I would like to do. Okay. Um. What did What did you say? I needed to roll for that. No, you don't need to roll for that. You oh, got, I don't need to. Okay. No, I'm not. I, you don't need to do that. Um. Okay. Then yes, I would just like to kind of like, kind of like put my foot on the blade and kind of slide his sword as far away as I can. Okay. Okay. Like, kind of like towards, like, uh, hold on, I'm gonna, I'll draw an arrow. <laughs> okay. Are you going to kick it north towards, like? I'm going to kind of kick it, like, in this direction. Oh, over towards the east side of the room. Yeah. Okay, so you just. So, like, you, if you... I have to put my foot on it and kind of slide it backwards to do so, Perfect. then that's what I Perfect, do. okay. Yeah. I have a very clear idea what you're doing now. Yep, okay. All right. Um, so, um. After your turn, Edebricks, um, I, I'm going to give uh, Aaron Habe his turn, uh, Gunner, before you go. Uh, so mm-hmm. uh, Aaron uh, runs down to the door uh, down here, and um, he the the door, uh, you think he was currently running to, Gunner, when you tried to pin him. Um, when he runs out of my threatened square, can I try to grab him again? You could take a basic attack if you want. Does that include a grab, or do I have to, like, swing on him? Yeah, you have to swing on him. Yeah, okay. I'll swing on him. All right. If Give he's... It... As I said, do you have your weapon drawn? Nope. I'm going to use uh, a gauntleted hand. Okay, so an unarm attack? Okay. Yep. Seven plus seven for 14 hit. Sure. Um, And then give me damage. I believe uh, unarmed is a D6. D6 or D4? It might be a D4. 
Um, give me two seconds. I'm gonna look it up. One, two. All right, look, you smart Alec. <laughs> That's all I got these days. I'm trying my best. Well, try harder. If at first you don't succeed, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're probably the same. Uh, one d three, so a d four minus one. You can just manually roll it and I'll apply it. There you go. That was a D3 plus four. Okay. So, Gunner, as he uh, runs out of your square, uh, you punch him in the back of the head and, with you know, land a pretty significant blow on the back of his head. Uh, blood starts mm -hmm. to well up uh, and drip down his back, um, and he's clearly bloodied at this point. Um, he gets to the door, um, and he... Uh, he throws it open and he yells, Kaisarlu, it is time. You are needed. And he passes out when he hits the, and he hits the ground. Okay. Uh, with that, well, you guys can be off initiative if you so choose. I so choose. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm all set. I like that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to secure the weapons. Great idea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to suggest that anyway. So, yeah, collect those up real quick. Just sit these guys in the corner. Um, and I uh, walk over and maybe guide them both up to one spot. I toss my manacles across the room for the others to use. <clears throat> and then I look back towards the open door. I shut it and I draw my seal, shield and sword. Okay. The 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 door that went downstairs? Yeah. Okay. And as a speaking action, he called for someone they're coming. All right, stand guard while we secure these guys. What type of skill check would a uh like applying shackles be? It would be a CMD, but we're going to um yeah. I mean, you can apply them. I want to simplify those rules. So I'm going to say you can apply me. I just put, you can throw them on, especially you know, yeah, like a manufactured right. thing like that, where it's very clear case is to, to hold somebody. Just snap them together. Yeah. 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 Not like, uh, rigging up bindings or something. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, uh in that case, I'll just slap them on both one and then the other. Okay. Um, yeah, well, he's, uh, escorting them. <laughs> um, I'm going to just kind of like help along and kind of nudge them with like the tip of my sword. <laughs> By the way, uh, benevolent, uh, dungeon master. Yes. Um, what weapons did I happen to collect up from them? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that would, uh, that's important, right? Uh, it might be. <laughs> um, let me grab that. Okay. Do, 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 do. Fingers crossed for magical swords. <laughs> <laughs> how how big are tieflings? Medium. Like the size of an average human, I believe. I think they're slightly shorter. So maybe they're like about, elves. Maybe about yacht's height. They uh, do have pretty fancy looking capes. <laughs> not gonna lie. Maybe one of them had a fancy hat. Might fit. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'll leave that up to the DM. <laughs> um, they, they unfortunately did not have any hats, but they ho both had a short sword on them. I quit. Uh, and it's a light shorts. crossbow. Uh, I quit. Uh, they both had short swords, light crossbows, and they had studded leather armor, and uh, they, bo uh, they both had uh, about 20 bolts on each of them. I studded leather armor or something that would incur a casting penalty? Yes. Like a will penalty? Yes. Yeah, okay, I don't want it then. Um, so I'm going to bring the southernmost guy up to the northernmost guy and sit them down together. Okay. Like they're in shackles now, arms behind their back. Uh, I'm going to kneel down and start to uh, help them with their blindness. 
So one wiping the glitter out of his eyes. Okay. And one wiping the blood out of his eyes. I'm going to try to reason with them a little bit here. And just uh, ask them, wait, uh, sorry, this is all out of character still. What was the name? Kazarlu? Kazarlu. Like yep. C A R so Z A R L U. Uh, like trying to sympathize with them a little bit and help them out and be like, look, guys, like we, we really didn't want to do this. Obviously, we're just, you know, we're sheriff's deputies. If you have, you're not doing anything too sketchy, you have nothing to worry about. Uh, try to like help them out a little bit. Say, I think your boss just overreacted. Who's Kaiserlo? Like, sh- how, how worried do we need to be? Maybe you can help us. You'll put in a good word for us with the sheriff? Yeah, of course. I mean, just uh, diffuse the situation. Just tell them we're not all that bad. Give me a, pres- we're not uh, here give to me cause a persuasion. Trouble. We just need to see if patient. Give me a diplomacy uh, or persuasion. Yeah, I'll roll a diplomacy at a plus one from Candlelist. Uh, 12. <laughs> I have your word that you'll put in a good word for us. We were just doing as we were ordered. We were ordered to defend this place. Of course you were. I probably would have did the same thing and were I in your shoes. I mean, you were told to do something. You did it. You didn't know the situation. Kaisarlu is... Eren took him in. Um, Kaisarlu presented himself to Eren as you know, a man of medicine and uh, wanted to rent some area underneath downstairs to conduct uh, his medical experiments. And I don't, I don't get a good feeling from him. Really? Is there anything we should know about this guy? I mean, obviously he's going to try to attack us when we see him too, right? How can we have any obvious weakness we should exploit to subdue him? The best way I can say this is he really likes the dead. And with that, we're going to take a quick break. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Um, now, when you say really likes the dead, it doesn't sound so good. Yeah, no. What do you mean? Well, I mean, could go too far. Guys, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back here in about five <laughs> minutes. Uh, thank you for bearing with us as we take this break. Uh, give our cast uh, a chance to, uh, to you know, freshen themselves and come back with, a, with you know, joy in mind for this. So uh, we'll see you in a few moments. All right, guys, we're coming back from the break. And... Um, uh, give me one second to get onto the right screen, and uh, here we go. Thank you so much for sticking with us on the break. Um, so, what do you guys think of uh, what do you got, Cass? What do you guys think of the uh, what's going on in the in the um, in the sanatorium? Um, I'm really confused. <laughs> What 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 confuses you, Edith Rex? Well, just I uh, I think uh, she's just like, what is going on here? Like, I thought we came here to get help, and we're getting attacked, and what is going on? All right, Mihai, what do you think? Yeah, this is all a bit much, isn't it? I mean, we just show up and ask like two simple questions and get attacked. That's kind of lame. Oh. Your actions kind of dictated it. You're yeah, the, I mean, you're, I mean, you personally, you're the catalyst for the attack. and get up, get up to run. So, I mean, is that does that warrant somebody getting attacked? I didn't attack him. I you dazed did. Him. You dazed him, which is an attack. Yeah, well, he, yeah, then yeah, it absolutely warrants it. Okay, by my decision. All right, <laughs> <laughs> getting up to run when a bunch of deputies show up. Yeah, they they can tase you, right? Like, let's... Absolutely, man. Yeah, we didn't try to kill Play the guy. stupid games win stupid prizes, right? Mm-hmm. It's true. It's true. Gunner, what do you think? <clears throat> um, I'm about to whip the hell out of something come out of, coming out of a door out of a basement. That's all I know for certain. Okay. 
Dab the thoughts. What do you what do you think? Uh personally, I think it's a bunch of shit. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> you seems think kind of shitty to me. It seems yeah, it seems very like a shitty situation. It really does. <laughs> that's such a crappy answer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I call a shitty situation. Hey, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, as you can see, we upgraded uh, the, the, the Dabdathos. Who is playing uh, Dabdathos is being upgraded to a emoji of a poo. Um, yeah, it's it's about the same. We figured a lot of people wouldn't notice the replacement. <laughs> um. <laughs> hey, everybody, if you're new to the uh, if you're new to the channel tonight, thank you so much for stopping in. Uh, this is uh, uh, Tabletop Tavern. Uh, we run a weekly um, Pathfinder Epic Adventure. We're in episode 32. On Monday nights, we run a Cyberpunk Savage Worlds game that premiered last Monday. Uh, so Monday night at nine Eastern time. Uh, stick around. Give us a follow. Come back and check us out. Uh, when we left off the break, um, the tiefling guards had, or orderlies had dropped the ominous words to, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> welcome to the fuckery. Um, <laughs> the, the tiefling guards had, uh, dropped the ominous words that, uh, you know, uh, he really, uh, re he really likes the dead. So with that, we're going to leave it, uh, with the party. Uh, do you care to elaborate more on that? Well, he, he's got to mean some sort of... Uh, wait, uh, at a character. Would I know anything about necromancy, or should I just shut up? Let's see if you can... Um, see if, if there's anything in your mind you can recollect, recollect about necromancy. I know a lot about magic, and I would have been studying magic. Yep. So give me knowledge. In my time in the city, after. I would have been reading or, books. So. Uh, g give me knowledge, Arcana. Sorry. Yeah, great. Um... I roll a 18. Uh, you are, you, you know of necromancy. You know that it is the, um, uh, the spells revolve around uh, manipulating the dead or taking the life force from a living, uh, a living creature to uh, imbue that life into another li uh, uh, receptacle. Um, um, you don't know any necromantic spells your necromantic spells yourself um but you have heard of the properties of necromancy before okay so guys he's talking about medical medical experiments and really likes the dead that sounds a lot like necromancy to me i mean why else would you rent a room in the basement if it wasn't to fiddle with lives and raise dead right so uh well, I mean, decider me. you've been in basements before i mean dab to thoughts you've Who's been in basements decider? before what? Sorry, I might be rats in this basement. There might life. be something far worse. There's um, yeah. There's there's other things that happen in basements, and I'm a little worried. Either way, it doesn't sound good. The tiefling, uh, the the one with the blood in his eye, you know, in his eyes. He's, can you wipe? Can you wipe this out of my eyes? Yeah, I kneel back down and start uh, wiping it away and try to maybe bandage him up a, a little bit somehow, like tie a piece of fabric around his head and a sweet bandana. Sure, give me a heel check. Okay. Uh, heel check, uh, four. Um, you're able to mop the blood out of his eyes, but you can't staunch the flowing of it. Um, you, you think if you hold something there uh, right now, uh, you will, um, you know, the blood will stop flowing in his eyes, but you're able to clear the blood out of his eyes so you can see. And, uh, he looks at you and he says, thank you. You know, um, we've heard things from the basement before. We've heard things, screams and unnatural sounds down there. Unnatural. Just hmm. Long-throated screams and... We don't, you know, we don't go down to the, the bottommost layer. We don't, we tend not to go down there. Um, we primarily stay here and on the next level down uh, where the, there's a couple, there's a cell block down there. Well, there's a couple cell blocks and then there's, you know, uh, a guard post down there and there's a couple of storage rooms, but there, there is two sets of store, stairs that go below that. And, uh, uh, do I think they're being honest with me? Give me a sense motive. Great. 
Uh, 11. You think they're on the level. Okay. Um, I'm going to step back towards Dabdathos and uh, look at him and say, are these guys, do they set off any evil vibes to you? Like, I don't see why we don't release them and ask them to help us. Uh, can I... They don't seem like bad guys. They just seem to get caught off guard by us. Uh, can I take a long look at them and sense motive? Sure. Okay. Uh, that is going to be a 19 plus 8 for 27. Dabnathos, you're firmly convinced they, they feel defeated at this point. Um, what you can, what you're getting from them is that, it, you know, they're, they're strange, they're, you know, strange to the local populace. Um, tieflings have been known to be in the, in the area, but, um, it's hard for them to get work. You do know that. Um, but you, you think they're, um, you think they're nervous because they, you know, are not going to be employed anymore. And they, they, you think they think they're going to be in the trouble with the town, but you also think they're very nervous of what is downstairs. Uh, you think they're on the level, uh, that they have not gone down to the, uh, the third floor, the, you know, the two floors down. Um, but you, you, you tend to believe them. You, uh, you, you know, just mm. based on what you've observed and what they've said, it, it seems to fall in line for you. All right, Mihai. Well, I get the sense that they are telling the truth. I don't know necessarily about setting them free, but I certainly have no desire to do any more harm to them. Not evil? I'm not getting that feeling, but I mean, they could be. I don't know. Uh, looking back to the tieflings. Gentlemen, how good are you with your swords? I think you just saw that. So bad, really bad. We, we're, we're here to take care of the inmates here. We're not, you know, we're, we're simple folk. We, you know, we, I mean, yeah, we have our weapons. I, you know, I've shot a crossbow out in the woods, taking down game to, you know, to, but I mean, the most we had to do here is rough up, you know, a couple of the, or, you know, muscle a couple of the, uh, the, you know, the inmates back into their cells. Okay. Well, what? Why are you guys doing this? Why are you here? We needed money. We needed jobs. Money, you say, huh? Well, we happen to be quite good at getting outsiders jobs in town. Perhaps you work with us for the time being and we hook you up with a home in Sandpoint. What if we just stay out of the way? I, we don't, you know, so the second one looks at you guys. We don't want any part of what's down there. Sense motive. Roll it. <laughs> Oh, man, hold on. I rolled a good one, but it didn't fall right. All right, 12 plus 8 for 20. You're convinced. They're just, they're just completely scared of what's down there. You know what, what is down there? I believe them. What, what do you think is in the basement? I don't know, but we've heard, like, animal sounds and, and, you know, and guttural sounds and, like, people screaming and different voices and, like, you know, people come in here and they disappear and it's... They've got Grace down there. That guy, he's not long for the world. You know, he's down on the, uh, on the, the, um, um, sorry. He's, uh, he's down on the third floor. Mihai, eat a bricks. Gather up. I'm going to try and call a huddle here. <laughs> I, uh, walk over and huddle up. I All right. will do the same. All right. Look. I think they're really just here trying to get a paycheck and if we probably let them go, tell them not to intervene, they'll just run away. Now, on the other hand, I could be wrong. I don't think I am, but I think we let them go. We deal with, down, we deal with what's down below, which most likely is going to involve a little bit of grease from me high and a little bit of Desna Spark from me. We're going to pull a quick gunner on them, you know, burn the dead, get out of here quick. Burn it to the ground and leave, yeah. So, Set them free, continue on our business? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I step in between the two of them. I mean, I think we need to figure out what's going on with the guests, but before we burn anything down. <clears throat> All right. Fair enough. Uh, I kneel down to their uh, shackles mm -hmm. and start to unlock them. Okay. But Mihai, I'll click. let you take care of this. And I'm gonna I'm gonna walk towards Gunner as he's doing that. Uh, 
undoing their shackles, I'll stand back up and say, gentlemen, it's your lucky day. Begging, uh, begging your pardon, could I, we can't do anything with the swords, but can, can we have the crossbows so we can at least hunt for food? Dave, did you take the crossbows? Um, I think I, I, I didn't put anything in my inventory, so if anything, I just collected it up and put it on the other side of the room. Uh, so I'll walk over and uh, do, do you want those swords? I mean, we could sell them. But the crossbows will help, you know, help us get food. I mean, we're great. I'll just give them everything back. Okay. This is the regular cross or swords, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's all mundane. There's nothing like, yep. okay. Yep. All right. I'll just give them back their gear uh, and tell them. If if you don't want to see what's in that basement, I suggest you leave now. Just don't forget us. We may cross paths again. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you. They're they're extremely grateful at this point. Um, and they they thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Find us in Sandpoint if you need us. Okay. Okay. And with that, I step into the room that I assume they leave. Yeah. Right. Can I search the room? Anything of value? Anything I can take from here? Give me a perception. We're about to burn this mother to the ground, right? So I'm going to loot it. <laughs> Mike, I'm sorry. Could you pop the map for me again, please? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, give me a perception, please. If you're going to search the room. Yep. Uh, perception of 13. Uh, so you look around the room and it's a typical, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, you know, there's a bedroll on top of a, you know, a shabby platform. Uh, there's a wash basin and a piss pot. Um, but you don't, you don't see much else in the room. I'm going to step back out. Nothing of value. Uh, we should clear this place before we yeah, commit I'm to burning it down. Go into the next room. I'll step down further. I assume there's another room. Uh, yep. There's a, so Edebrex, give me a perception if you're going to search that room. Uh, that's an 11. Edebrex, uh, you say kind of the same thing. It's, uh, you know, there's not many possessions in there. Um, you think, uh, it, you know, it's just a, a clean, sterile, sterile room, very clean, but there's a bedroll and a platform, piss pot, and, uh, you know, a little wash basin for them. Okay. Remembering there was a room further north, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go and can I, is there a, like a shut door there or something? Yeah, there is. I can't there really is. tell uh, with the fog of war. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'd like to try to open it. All right. You put your hand on it and it uh, it opens up. And I step inside. Okay. Um, so you look around the room and uh, you... Uh, you look around and there's a bed, a uh, stool, and a writing desk in the room. Um, um, there's a trunk as well. And, uh, pardon me. Um, uh, you know, it, you think this is Aaron's room by the, the look of it. It's a little, gr a little more grand, not much, but than the other two rooms that you guys have taken a look in. And, uh, um, you know, so you think this is his room. I'd like to open that trunk you were talking about. Um, you attempt to open it and it is locked. Uh, I'll turn around and shout to Eater Bricks. <laughs> Eater Bricks, lock trunk. I'm on my way. <laughs> uh, well, she's coming. I'll check the desk. Anything on there of particular interest? Any notes or anything that would lead me to understand what's happening in the basement? Um, give me a perception, please. Uh, not 20. Um, if you, as you look around the desk, uh, you know, there, there appears to be a little, uh, diary. Um, you open it up and you scan through it and you see men, uh, mentions of Kaisaru, Kaisaru. And, um, you know, if you start at the oldest and you work towards a new, you, you know, you take a little bit of time and you look and he says, you know, there's, uh, the first couple entries are what, you know, um, Kazarlu has it, you know, um, approached and, uh, you know, we're lucky he, um, you know, he's a rich, uh, rich version and, uh, 
he just wants some space down in the uh the i'm sorry the third and fourth room uh uh sorry the th uh, third and fourth rooms down below um he's promised to keep this afloat, this place afloat and uh you know allow me to um do my work and um but he, and i find it a little odd that he wants the uh the bodies of anybody who has passed um but he says he's a doctor and his coin is good um maybe he's just trying to get a better understanding of the human body or the the different races that pass through here as it goes on as you you know you work through the diary um it mentions you know noises coming down um and uh it mentions a confrontation between Eren and Kai Kaisarlu and uh uh it seems like things come came to a head at the at one point and uh because the the noise and all, all the, the the unknown stuff that was happening below um like shrill cries and things of that nature um started to grate on um Eren's and his orderly's nerves um and there was some kind of confrontation between the two of them he mentioned it as the confrontation um and just uh wishing he had never brought him in uh to uh you know to to fund the sanitarium Peter Bricks, would you like to try to open that that crate i would like to give me a disabled device please is a 13. Rex, uh, you believe that the lock is beyond your skill at this point. Okie dokie. You slide your tools in and you try to work on it, but uh, you're unable to get that, that chest open. Yeah, I, I can't get this right now. I don't, I don't know if it's the lock or maybe my tools are busted. Uh, yeah. Gunner I'll, and, uh... Gunner and uh, Dabdathos, please give me a perception check. All right. Oh, yeah, man. 17 plus one for 18. Nat one plus 13 for 14. Gunner, you hear. You hear a moaning from below um, through the door downstairs. It's a very faint moan. And then you hear a shrill cry um, as if something is in pain and um, it reverberates up through uh, through the floor and the hallway up and uh, kind of echoes through that hallway. And you heard it. Mm. Fuck it, I'm not waiting at the door anymore. I look at Davithos and I throw the door open before I head downstairs. Okay. You open the door, and uh, if you look, um, and there is a stairway um, that goes down about 20 feet um, to the next level. You believe is a level below you. I mentally count to three. Waiting for Davdathos to do or say something. Gunner, where are you going? <laughs> Someone's in danger. And that's three. And I head downstairs. Okay. I am going to open it up for you. And move your character. As I see him go, I'm going to yell back and say, Gunner's going, and I'm following. <laughs> okay. And are you going down the steps? Are you following yeah. him completely? Okay. Yeah, I'll probably be about 15 feet behind him. Okay. So I get him. Here with Ooh, me. I'm teleporting. Ooh. <laughs> you are. Oh. Magic. Um, All I saw on my screen because I was zoomed in was my character just fly off of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic. Oh, I'm gone. It's oh. magic. We're in a fantasy world. We're doing magic. Um, <laughs> um, give me a perception, Edabrix, and uh, Mihai. Four. Jeez, thirteen. Peter Bricks, you hear um you hear the pitter patter of uh steps run by, and then you hear the voice of Davdathas yell out to you saying I'm following Gunner down the stairs. In that exact pitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh so i guess they're going downstairs did you hear them 
Uh, no, really? Oh, well, I just heard Davdathos yell that he was following Gunner down the stairs. Uh, we gotta go. And I just take off running. Okay, we're doing this. Give me a perception, I... Mihai, as you get to the corner. Uh, perception of 10. <laughs> nope. Okay, keep going. You move as, as you see fit. I'm following, but I think I run slower than he does. So. Yes, yes, you do. I have a move speed of 30, so yeah, I'll move, move, move as fast as I can to the top of the door. Okay. Or to the top of the I'll stairs. I'll move as fast as I can, but in the same amount of time, I end up there. <laughs> Makes about sense. Yeah. Peter, yeah. Peter Bricks, give me a perception as you round the corner, please. 22. Peter Bricks, you notice that there's a little pool in the blood on the ground, but Aaron Habe is no longer there. Where'd the body go? I don't know. I was meaning to steal his hat on the way through. How did he... Did they... I didn't notice him get off the ground. Nope, you're already downstairs. So he was on the ground when I ran downstairs, right? Correct. Okay. So, um, I'm going to run over to the top of the stairs and yell down the stairs, Where's the body? <sighs> As she's doing that, I'm gonna go. Give me a pers oh, door, hold on door. Okay. Uh, give me a perception gunner and dab to us, please. Typing too. Uh, so you're gonna go I'm... open that door. Yep. Okay. I rolled an eight plus thirteen for twenty-one perception. Sixteen plus one for seventeen. You hear the the voice of your friend Edabrex calling from upstairs. Where's the body? We're about to find one down here. <laughs> no, the one that Gunner got. Uh, I step into this room, assuming it's open. Yep. Uh, so when you walk into that room, um, uh, Mihai, uh, the the room contains a few oiled raincoats hanging on pegs. Um, you tip it, You think this it, the orderlies use this room to come and go from the building when they were making their patrols of the grounds. So this is like a service entrance. Uh, I'll step right through to the exterior. Okay. And can I see him from outside? Like, do I get the sense he's bolted and left the building? Give me a perception, please. Uh, perception of 18. Uh, you see splatters of blood on the, um, on the railing, uh, and you see a little bit of blood on the, in the, you know, uh, as you look out, uh, west from the, uh, from the, from the railing there, uh, you, you, your eyes kind of fall a line and you see another spot of blood and you see him disappearing into the woods. Uh, I'm going to shout Aaron, this isn't over. And I'm going to step back inside and tell Edie Ricks. Okay. Yeah, he's gone. Uh, Where did he go? Like, what, what the heck? Well, who knows if he'll survive out in the forest with the head trauma that Gunner gave him, but uh, he's taken off. All right. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I guess he could have escaped, but... No, I just saw him running. Oh, okay. Well, Gunner, right. uh, Gunner in Dabdathas, uh, when you get down there, uh, you, you, at the bottom of the stairs, it kind of looks like a guard post, uh, there, there would post guards there, um, to stop anything coming from down up, oh, anything up from going down further. Um, the door in, uh, uh, that, that's right in front of you. And I know it's hard to open this up on an angle like this, but, um, that's a door right there. Yeah, right yeah. that's a door. That's a door right okay. there. Uh, so it's, it looks like it's reinforced with iron bands. Perhaps we should knock. Is there anything? It's just this like tiny room and there's a door here. Correct. Okay. And there's no way to physically open it from this side. I never, I mean, there's a door handle. All right. It's a door. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm familiar with these. Oh, uh, it's not, it's not new it's to a, you? 
No. It's like a wall on hinges, though. <laughs> I've, you know? I've heard of these handle. things. <laughs> All right. Uh, Gunner, get ready. I'm going to try and open it. I step to the side with my sword and shield in hand. All right. I'm going to kind of I'm going to kind of go off to the side of it and like reach for the handle. I assume there's a handle. Yes, there as is. with most doors, as I, I just said, out. literally 15 seconds ago. Yes, I reach out and I cast light on his helmet. Oh, God, why, why are you making me so bright? <laughs> That's the only way. That's the only way. OK, <laughs> all right. I'm going to try the handle. It is locked. Gunner, it's locked. It's beyond my area of expertise. We're going to switch over to Mihai and Edabrex. What are you guys doing at this point? I'm uh, heading down the stairs. Yeah, I'll follow. Okay. So you guys go down the stairs and you come to a small room and you see your friends, uh, you know, uh, Gunner and Mihai down. I'm sorry, Gunner and Davdathas down there. It looks like Davdathas is currently at the door uh, trying to... Um, trying to, you know, open the door, but it's just, just rattling right there. So he's not, he's not able to get through. Ah, Mihai, there you are. Where's Edebrex? Uh, literally right in front of me. I look down. Pointing to behind Gunner. <laughs> <laughs> I look down, I see, I assume I see her. <laughs> just waving like, hi. God, you got to stop doing that. I never <laughs> noticed when you approach. You got to stop being so tall. She's I'm really sorry. sneaky. Look, we got a situation here. And I jiggle the handle. Ah, <laughs> uh, a classic heater brick situation. Indeed. I see how this is. I make I, way. I physically, like, slowly push her forward. <laughs> <laughs> just, like... As I take her spot. <laughs> you doing the, like... Like you just kind of scooting around her while just like, just like uh, hit bumping her like, towards you know, the door. Yeah yeah, 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 just a little casual, like not trying to be rude about it, but I'm just like, go, go, go. But go. hey, by the way, uh, let's see. All what right, are you doing I, at this point, Eda Bricks? I'm gonna, um, so, so I'm like, I'm turning to Dav and I'm like, so, so it's locked. That's what you're trying to tell me. I don't know, but look, and I like reach back at it and I jiggle it again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, you're such an idiot. <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, roll to unlock the door, please. Give me a uh, disabled device. That is a 20 plus 7 for 27. Woo -woo. Woo -woo. Nice roll. I would uh, like to take the doorknob with me, please. <laughs> 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 so Edabrick skillfully slides her tools into the door uh, and... You hear her, uh, it, it, like her tools aren't in there more than a fraction of a second and pop the door opens and it falls back and uh, it, it opens up. Edebricks, you repaired like, the door. You are quite the door mechanic. Yeah, that's, that's my, that's my trade door mechanic. Yep. I knew it. Every time the handle doesn't work, you make it work. It's amazing. It, it is impressive, yes. That, that is a very impressive thing, Edebrex. I like your, you know, that's an impressive skill. <laughs> door <Right>. mechanic. <laughs> the new D&D class, door yeah. mechanic. Door mechanic. <laughs> I mean, um, all right. Um, so when you open up the door um, and you peer in, it, you think this looks kind of looks like a common room. Um, it's, you know... Uh, for the guests there. Um, there's, um, there's a, there's a man standing in the room and he, uh, this uh, is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> we should have knocked first. <laughs> we should have. Um, and, uh, he, when you, when the door opens, his head kind of swings over in his ears and, uh, as you know, when he looks over, you notice he's not actually looking. He's you think he's orienting on the sound of the door opening um, and he's holding a cane and uh, his eyes are um, there's slashes through him. And uh, you don't think this man um, is uh, is able to see you at this point. Sneak attack. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um. 
<laughs> I'm remaining absolutely still. I would like to use stealth to move into the room, please. Okay. That's a 21. I know the moment I move, it's all over, so I'm going to just stay <laughs> still. Accurate, yep. Ina Bricks, where would you like to move to? Um, I'm not going very far into the room. I'm just, I just kind of want to get inside. So I'm just going to kind of move through the door and then go over and just kind of like hug the <clears throat> the southernmost wall of that room. And how far are you going over? Um, only, only like right inside the door. So like five feet, maybe. Okay. Give me a perception, please. Uh, that is a 24. Inbricks, you hear some sound coming from the cell over here um these these rooms on the side uh appear to be cells um you think like i said that the uh the, the, the there's this is like a common area and the cells are kind of where they keep the, the you know the patients here um and okay. um the south which is fairly consistent with what they yeah the guys upstairs said okay um you see a very ancient man um in the southwestern cell um, and, uh, you don't think he sees you yet, but you're, you, you know, you hear and you, you know, you peek around and you see this, this man, he must, he, he must be in the end stages of life. Uh, he's that old and he's in the, uh, he's in there. Um, he's kind of looking around. I mean, he can see, he can see, but you think he might've been alerted by the sound of the door opening. Okay. Um, I'm going to just kind of wait for a minute and see what happens. Like if, if the, anybody that's in the room reacts to the door being opened or the potential that somebody has come in. The only reaction you saw was when he turned around, when the gentleman that's standing in the middle of the room turned around and kind of like, you know, heard the door. Okay. Um, is it, is it time for food? Aaron, I'm so hungry. Is it time for food? Um, at this point, I would like to step back out. <laughs> um, I'm not even going to roll for stealth this time. I'm just going to kind of make my way out back into the hallway and tell everybody, D did you hear that? Like, they need food. They haven't eaten. We, we need to get them out of this building. Did the guy react to that? When she came out? When she said something. Idrix, were you... Uh... I was not using stealth. I was just... I just stepped back out. Okay. Whose voice is that? Whose voice? That's a female voice. Who's, whose voice is that? At this, he starts shrieking. And this apparently sets off the other man uh, in the other in the cell on the southwestern wall. Amelia! Amelia, is that you? Amelia! I've been here for so long! Amelia! I, I nudge her and I quietly say, Say yes! Say yes! <laughs> My name is not Amelia. Say yes! <laughs> I don't want to give them false hope. He's panicking. The shrieking continues as you guys are standing there. It's, uh, it's very apparent, you know, um, you know, it's it's very loud shrieking. Uh, the, the the calls from the man in the middle of the room are, um, um, you know, for food. And, you know, so hungry. And then the man in the uh, the southwestern cell is calling for uh, somebody named Amelia. Uh, I'm gonna step into the room. Okay. And attempt to calm them down. Okay. So how would you like to do this? Uh, I'm just simply gonna talk. To them. I'm gonna say, guys, guys, we're here to help. Calm down. Obviously, horrible things have befallen you here. And uh, we're here to set those things right. You need to relax. Okay, so he's screaming. At this point, he's screaming. And uh, he just, and he just, you know, he's, 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 he's like freaking out and screaming because this is a voice he's not, you know, he's never heard. Not sure what's coming on, going on. And uh, uh, the guy in the southwestern cell, uh, after he's, you know, for, after he screams for Amelia for a couple minutes, he stops. He goes, no, 
No, Amelia's gone. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he looks around and he's kind of thinking about things and he's like, um, you know, he's like, you're not Amelia. And then he lapses back into which, you know, calling for Amelia again. I cast light on my shield and I step into the main room with uh, Mihai. And I go, we're the heroes of the same point. Where is everybody? We're the ones do that they were working on down here. Food. Starving. Do, do you, have, you have food? Yes, I've got food. I pass my shield off to Mihai. And I, I attempt to hold it and fall it's to the probably floor. like, thump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I got it. I, I start pulling out pieces of tack, and I start heading over toward the uh, the cells and hand carefully making sure he can't get to me. I, like, hand it off to him kind of thing. Oh, like like at arm's reach? Yeah. Okay. Um, so he grabs the food from you, and he just kind of ravishly devours it, you know, um, after I take the shield from Mihai as he's devouring it, I pull the shield up to see what he looks like. Uh, this is just a, it's an, it, it appears to be an old man. Um, and um, he's wearing like typical farmer garb. He, you know, um, um, but you think he, you know, he's, he's, he's very, you know, his eyes are sunk in. He looks very malnourished, malnourished. And uh, he is, you know, he just, ha you know, looks like an old you know, he's been stuck in here for a while. Pale skin, uh, doughy, you know. I tear off chunks of the tack and, and pieces of the ration, and I hand it out to all of them. Um, and I start looking throughout the room as I'm as I'm dropping off the food to each person. All right. So the only two people um are the the person that's standing in the middle of the room and the person in the southwestern cell. Okay. I'm like, I'm going to come in, come back into the room and I want to go over. It was the man in the cell that was in the southwestern cell that was yelling for Amelia, right? Correct. Yes. OK, I want to go over and talk to him. OK, Um. so I go over and I'm like, I'm not Amelia, but I'd like to know who she is so I can help you find her. My dear, my dear Amelia. My What's the uh, the door to over there? Do you know? Who are you asking, Gutter? The gentleman that's talking to Edrix. Amelia, where is she? My dear Amelia, where is she? Do you know where she was when you last saw her? He looks around Edrix and he's... I don't know. I don't know. Give me a sense Amelia... moment. Give me a sense moment. Uh, okay. Okay. Sense motive. Oh, uh, 13. Edebrick, so you think this man is caught in the grips of senility. He's confused and he's remembering somebody from his life. Okay. Um, Edebrick, I'm sorry, Gunner, he does not answer your question. Okay. I head to the door and start wrenching at it. See if it'll open. Uh, the door to the uh, the southwest. Okay, to the north. The one I'm standing oh. in front of. Is that okay. a cell as well? No. Like, can we see in there? Or... Nope. Okay. Okay. Um, Just checking. I'm going to ask him to describe Amelia for me. When you when you ask him to describe, um, is the only time you've seen a smile from joining his face. It her hair of gold. On skin that was perfect. She was so beautiful on that day. My heart, my heart more miss my Amelia. And for a second, Edebrix, you see a light come on in his eyes, and he look and he looks at you. And he's just very confused. And then slowly he dips back into that and he, yeah. She was she was beautiful. I haven't seen her in so long. Where's my Amelia? Well, I'm gonna step over next to Edebricks and say these people were locked in a room. 
yeah. the man here is blind and this one he's barely lucid we we can't just let them be free but we need to get them out of here oh, we need to get them out i Gun- know gunner the door over there is not locked is not locked throw it open let's see what's inside uh, when you open the door, um, you see a set of stairs that are descending. All right, time to go. I look back at my friends and go, stay here. I'll lead the way. And you're going down? Yep, time to take slow steps down and see what's in front of me. Using my light source on my shield. Okay. Uh, Gunner, you land here. Um, it comes, uh, so you get to, uh, the top of a set of stairs. Um, it comes down to a landing essentially. That's, uh, you know, that can either go back up or go down further, or there is a door, uh, that you're able to take t- to the east of you. South, my, I'm sorry, the south of you. I'm sorry, say that one more time. I, I don't think I understood fully. You come down the stairs and you arrive at a landing. There's a door to the south of you, and then there's a set of stairs that go down uh, down below you to the east. Meeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a ghoul by the toe. Fuck it. I keep heading downstairs. Okay. We're going to switch back to the party and... Uh, what is everybody else doing at this point? Um, I'm going to turn to Mihai and say, I know we need to get them out, but we also need to figure out what is going on. We need to yeah. secure this building before we deal with them, unfortunately. Right, that's what I'm saying. Um, I'm going to turn back to the man and I'm going to say, can you wait here for me while I go check the rest of the building to see if Amelia is here? He's locked in a cell still, is he? Yeah. Yes, yes, he is. But there's one man for you. The, the, the man that's sitting the blind in the blind man. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm I'm Ida Bricks, I'm trying to make him feel like he is trying to trapped, comfort him. But yeah, trying to comfort him. Give me um give me a diplomacy. Oh yeah, I think diplomacy is probably the best. Okay. Ugh, seven. He doesn't, you know, the, as you talk to him, um, the, he, you know, he lapses in and out of the senility, you know, the senility, and he's unable to, you know, he can't focus on you enough to, uh, for you to soothe him, and he starts okay. to, he starts to yell again. Um. At this point, I just keep kind of repeating, like. I'm going to try to find her. I'm going to try to find her. Wait here. I'm going to try to find her. Okay. Um, and kind of back away. And yeah. Um, If I may. Yep. What I kind of want to do, standing in the middle of this room, I kind of just want to survey the room, like from south and loop around and just kind of take in the sight. And like, can you fully describe what I'm seeing all around me? Sure. So... The center of the room is a uh, is a common room. Um, the along the outside walls are cells. Uh, so this is where, um, base uh, to the north of you is the steps with that little you know the the room that that you you know you can clearly see there's a set of steps in there that goes down at this point, right? Um, mm-hmm. uh, so along the cells, um, uh, they're you know they're they're open face cells. They're steel bars that come from the top to the bottom. Um, with, you know, a steel door, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very close to a prison in each of the cells. There's a sleeping area. Um, uh, pardon me. There's like a bedroll chamber pot. Um, this, the place doesn't smell that good at all. It doesn't smell like it was taken very good care of and that these people have been t- taken very good care of. Um, uh, the, all this, you know, the other cells, except for the Southwestern one are empty, uh, except for the gentleman in this, you know, like I said, in the Southwestern, uh, um, in the side of the room. These people have been done wrong. Something horrible is happening here. We need to press on. Are any of these cells open? Like their gates are jar? Um there's one, and it's the uh the the northwesternmost one is open. The other ones are currently closed. Um 
I'll guide the blind man to it. And uh, just tell him to take a seat and wait. Or, like, lay down on the bedroll. Convince, uh, 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 do it in RP and give me a persuasion, please. Or, yeah, uh, diplomacy. Yeah, diplomacy, yeah. yeah. Um, well, diplomacy and nine, but what my intention was to say to him is just to guide him over there and tell him, look, you've had a little bit of food. You obviously need rest. Wait here. Uh, we'll come back. And when we do, um, we'll take you to a place where you'll be treated better. Do you promise? Of course. I mean, it doesn't seem as though you can see were you to leave on your own without our aid, you would definitely be in trouble. There's beasts and dragons out there in the woods. Um, you know, we barely made it here, but we've blazed a path to take you back. Hmm. I guess I'm, I guess that's the only thing I can do at this point. Uh, I'd leave the gate open. Okay. Just kind of trust in that he'll chill. Okay. And then what are you guys doing? Um, I want to press onward. All right. Yeah. yeah. I'm fine with that. All right. So, Davdathos, as you get down the steps, you, you, uh, you come down to a landing. Um, to the south of you is a door. Uh, this is going to happen for all three of you. This is not room for all to put all three of you on that landing. Um, so yeah. when you come down to the landing, uh, there's a door to the, that leads to the south of you. Um, you see Gunner at the bottom of the steps um, uh, going... I'm sorry, you don't actually see Gunner at the bottom of the steps. Um, I just haven't moved his token over yet. So we don't know which floor he stopped on? Um, is there a door in front of me right now? Yes, that's the door to the south of you that I was saying. It's it's closed? Yes. Well, we're not in the business of closing doors behind ourselves, so I feel like he might have continued onward. <laughs> <laughs> that is sound logic, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I can appreciate that, unless it's a spring-loaded fancy pants door. I don't think it is. <laughs> okay, moving on. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going down to see if i spot him okay are you guys following in tow yeah i'm gonna check if that door is locked though as i pass it yeah it is not in fact locked okay i'm gonna look over my shoulder to eat a bricks and say it's open and then i'm gonna keep walking past it i'm pretend i'm standing right at the landing with you <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> um i would like to uh i'm gonna just kind of open it just a, a tiny bit and see if i can see inside at all uh okay eater bricks as you peek open the door uh you look in and you see a um there's a door on uh the eastern wall and then there's a door to the south of you um and you can see that the um uh it curve like the room kind of curves off towards the east but you're you can't you can only see to about right here uh, you can't see much past the what what what's what much past that. Okay. And there's no there's nobody in there that no. I can see. Nope. Okay. Um. I'm gonna close the door again, and uh, I'll kind of look at Mihai and I'll say, that way we'll remember to open it again later. We'll go back in there. Okay. Good logic. Good logic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll think Closed we haven't door been in is there a yet. Curious so. door. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Gunner, we're going to switch over to you. Um, when you Kay. get down here, uh, you cannot see much. The room is obscured by mist. Uh, so, you can see about 10 feet in front of you. Um, okay. As Kinda you get down the stairs. Yeah, as you get downstairs, um, you notice that it's changed from a, like a from like a building to more of like a rough hewn rock. Like you think you might have gotten to a basement, um, ah. but you can only see about five ten feet in front of you uh, with the mist. Slow steps in. All right, give me two seconds. I want to look something up real quick.
All right. All right. Um, yep, that's always you take that. Um, give me. So you're going to move five feet at a time in? Yep. Okay. All righty. So move sure. as you as you see fit. I can, I don't know if you can physically do it. Can you move it to an, uh, a spot that's covered by the fog of war? Okay, yep, right there. Okay. All righty. Um, so as you get over to that, um, you look around. Um, there's a table, and on that table, um, is a skeleton. Um, the Around the table are a bunch of things that you would typically see in um, with experiments. There's a bunch of glass beakers and there's a, you know, there's open books and um, there's tools on the table. I'm sorry, it wasn't a skeleton. It's a body um, on the body as a it's flayed open. There is tools arranged around the uh, the corpse. Um, it looks like somebody had been dissecting, dissecting the body. Um, there's organs on the table uh, around it in, in metal trays. And, um, uh, you know, the blood is congealed, um, but it is comp the chest is completely flayed open. Uh, the legs, uh, the skin itself has been removed. And so you can see tendon exposed and all the uh, all the muscles. And um, <clears throat> and uh, it's a it's a pretty grisly scene. I look over the body briefly and I, I look back towards the staircase and then continue to look around the room as I'm holding the shield over my head to try to cast better light. Okay. Um, or try to get a better light effect in the room, I guess. Okay. Uh, is it like a fog mist that maybe like wind would fix or like maybe like some heat from like torches? Or? It's it's fog. It's dense fog. Dense uh, to, fog. To the west of you, you do see a... I'm sorry, to the east of you, do you do see a door? Um, but we're going to pop back over to Edebrex, Mihai, and Dabdathos and see what they're doing. Got me. I'm continuing down the steps. Okay. I'll yeah, follow I'll follow behind. Okay. All right. So as you guys get down there, you guys can arrange yourself in whatever order you want. Um, me can... first. Me first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for you guys as well, as you get down here, the it's it, the, there's a fog that's obscuring uh, most things in the room. Uh, you hear movement. Um, you're not actually able to see Gunner at this point, but you do hear movement around in the room. Uh, I'll detect magic. And start focusing that in, just hoping to... Uh... Draw a cone for me. Yeah, I guess emanating from where I'm at. Uh, hold on, see if I can do this. Drawing, I can't draw a cone on this map. That's weird. Oh, because of the fog of war. Okay, so do oh, it. Pointers, from... draw a cone. I got it. Yeah. Do... Uh, what degree do I get? Is it sixty degrees, something like that? I think it's a forty-five route. Uh, forty-five is that, I guess. But anyway, from it would be like that. Well, uh, like it I, has I don't to. Know it has to start from is. one of your corners. So yeah, starting from a corner now. Okay. All right. But, uh, yep. You detect, you, giving uh, the best guess of where I think the room might be. If it, the mist is that obscuring, I have no idea, but yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, you definitely detect magic in the room. Okay. I'm going to focus on that and see if I can, uh, okay. Over Me time, hone in on the location of those auras. Eat a bricks and dab to thoughts. What are you uh, doing at this point? Um, um, I could... Go ahead, Dev with us. No, 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 no. I was, I was just gonna say I'm, I'm just kind of looking around the room at this point. Um, so Edebrix, yeah. when you get there, you bump into your friend Gunner. Oh, hello, my friend Gunner. Hi. What, what, what's going on down here? What is, what is all this? <sighs> he wasn't treating or helping people they were performing experiments he flattened that man's legs and tore apart his chest cavity and there's more going on down here i can't see okay give me a perception right, everybody please yeah that's a six from gunner 
Seven cool. plus 13 for 20. Uh, six plus eight for 14. And flat 18. Uh, Dapnathos and Mihai, you hear a soft groaning from coming from different positions within the room. Um, uh, fascinating. <laughs> I'm I just, gonna... uh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, I'm gonna continue forward. I do nothing and just continue to focus on detect magic. I don't know how much time has passed, but if we're on like the second or third round ish, um, whatever you think. So you detect. Uh, magic uh, to the north of you, um, as well as spreading out. Uh, you, for, you, you, you sense four distinct magical presences in this room. Um, and one of them is to the north of you. One of them is farther north. Um, and two are more western in the room. Uh, would I be able to determine which is the most potent aura? They're the same. So, like, is the one that's obvious? Oh, they're all the same? They're all the same. Hmm. Uh, are any of them within line of sight? You don't have line like of sight. The room, room. the room okay. is covered by mist. Okay. Uh, so, I'll point these points out to the team. I don't know if I can get pointers on the map or something, or if that's like, I don't know. Nope, it's general. Okay, I'll just share that information with the team. Four magical auras, they're here, 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 and here. How are you doing this? Um, I'm going to step up beside them. Okay. And just physically point in the general directions. All right, so I'm going to say Edobrix and Davnathos can see you, but Gunner can't at this point. Okay. Why the hell is Mihai flailing about? I don't know. And I'll take a step. Gunner, as you take a step up there, I'm going to need everybody to roll initiative, please. Yay. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> initiative? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, 17 for me. 15. 12. 14. Okay. I gotta, I gotta cycle this thing. Um, give me a second. All right, we are gonna be at the top of the order. Um, so from the Edebrex, uh, the room to your uh, east right there, the door suddenly opens and a creature shambles out of that room. And uh, hold on one second. I think I gotta open it up for you. Uh, yeah, a creature shambles out of that room. Why is it being stupid? Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's dancing. <laughs> <Holy> shit. <laughs> because this is Trevor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Let my god. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> All right. So a creature uh, shambles out of that room and it's got to help. <laughs> it doesn't help Look at all. <laughs> uh, so the creature <laughs> has a spear stuck in it and uh, a couple uh, arrows stick out of one of the shoulder. Uh, you have seen this creature, uh, one of these creatures before. It is in fact a zombie. Um, as it opens the door, Eater Bricks, it is going to reach over and try and take a, um, and take a swipe at you. Uh, it's going to try to bite you in the face. Or nice. AC4. That's uh, gonna miss. Edebrex, it's your turn. Uh, your turn, ma'am. I'm gonna try to bite it in the face. No, I'm not. Um, oh, <laughs> that would taste bad. And that would just taste and, horrible. And oh. that's her. It's how you get the Rona. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. And um, I'm going to uh, yes, I'm going to swing at it with my short sword. Um, where is my short sword? My short sword is right there. It's gen uh, generally on the character sheet somewhere. I, like, I'm just, like trying to grab the die and I'm moving the whole character sheet. This is not going very well. What the heck? And suddenly I'm I go, roll is the this die, your short sword? <laughs> Inrix, uh -oh. what did you roll? I don't want to tell you. What, but, but what did you roll? 
a 400. That's wow on a 20 sided <laughs> dice. That's impressive. Yeah. Well, you know, it exploded. Exploding dice. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get some exploding dice in chat that, <laughs> for this that, awesome Pathfinder game? <laughs> that uh, was a one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need a d20 roll from you, please. Groin punch. Groin punch. Hey! <laughs> <I> mean, well. <laughs> uh, you critically hit yourself with the same attack you fumbled with, receiving all negative conditions and effects of the attack. Wow. That's the worst one. <laughs> Jeez. It's one of the Roll worst. Roll that damage. So yeah. as Kitabrit stabs forward at the, uh, she, she does this. As she stabs forward at the, uh, the, zomb uh, the zombie, the blade comes around and she sticks herself in the chest for how many points of damage? Oh my god. What's, what's your trick? Oh my god. <laughs> um, Drop it on yourself. Let's see it yeah, automatically. I'm try to. Just Can you use positives as negatives? Oh, these are damage. Uh, yep, that worked. Six damage Ooh. to eat a break. <laughs> okay, so as the sword comes back around and, and it hits her in the chest, uh, it, it, it takes a good piece of chunk out of uh, the right side of her body. So um with that if if there's anything else you'd like you to do in your turn Edebix, you can hit that button to advance to the next oh <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, what i like geez. to do next uh i'm gonna i'm gonna take a five foot shift to the south yep and uh i'm gonna drop to a knee with my holy symbol in hand okay and look up to the heavens and say desna give us strength for this fight and I channel energy. Okay. Are you doing... To, uh, you're healing? Yes, to heal. Okay. All right. So as Dabdathos calls to his god, uh, and uh, his hand starts to glow, um, and he, you know, wraps it around his, uh, his holy symbol, the holy symbol starts to glow, uh, a, a warm light uh, moves out from, uh, from, from Dabdathos and spreads over you all. Um, and it heals for how much damage? For four. So everybody check your sheet, and if you have damage, take four back, please. Okay. Alrighty. Mihai, your turn, sir. Uh, so given my previous round with the tech magic, I knew there was something just to the north of me. I'm pretty confident that's what that was, right? Is that fair to say? Educated guess, yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to say, I think there's three more of them to the party. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to... Wait, what were the origins? Can I recall? Uh, you think they were Western like they and Northwestern. Moved, and right, but still. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Okay, standing where I'm at, I'll mm, shoot. No. Okay, I'll I'll fire acid splash at the zombie because fuck this guy. <laughs> uh and I roll a fourteen to hit. Uh that is a hit, sir. And I do three damage. So as the uh as the acid hits the creature, a little pss and it, it, it burns and you see a little of the flesh um, melt and kind of trickle down its chest um, and it groans and its eyes orient on you, Mihai. Uh, and with that, I five foot back up the steps. Okay. <laughs> and end my turn. Gunner. Mihai made a friend. <laughs> I'm going to step right there and swing off on this mochizi. All right. So Gunner steps to the side towards the eastern wall and uh, swings um, through the uh, fog. I whip my sword around and cut into him with a uh, 24 to hit. That's a hit. All right. And incoming damage on Senor Zombie. He takes a beastly six points of damage. Okay, so as Gunner's sword cleaves down the side of it, um, it it the it the blade lodges in the flesh, um, and chunks of flesh drop from the zombie to the ground, uh, with a step in with a with a smell, 
Gunner, as you step over there, uh, you do notice that there is another uh, creature behind you. Great. Uh, it is northeast, uh, sorry, yeah, northwest of you by about 10 feet. Oh. Okay. So when you're done, hit that button. Um, will we get a quick dungeoneering roll to make sure that these are just, in fact, what we think they are? You can. Or knowledge yep. religion? Yep. Both All of right. those would do. Uh, four plus four for an eight. They look familiar to the ones you've seen before, but you're not ag exactly sure if there's anything different about them. Okay. That's good enough for me. All right. Um, so, Davdathos, you hear um, movement, and uh, one of the creatures shambles up to you and is going to try to uh, to bite you. Uh, for ah. AC 9. Please. Come on. <laughs> um so Dabdathos presents his shield as he hears a creature a creature shuffling over to him. Uh and the, the creature just kind of slams its arm um and uh and batters off the shield. I'm gonna need a perception from Dab uh I'm sorry. Yeah. Everybody give me a perception, please. Five plus thirteen is eighteen. Uh, I rolled a 13. Peter Bricks. You're muted. Sorry. Uh, I had a um, uh, 11 plus 8 for 19. Okay. Uh, so, Dabdathas and Peter Bricks, you hear uh, somebody begin to cast a spell. Sp uh, spellcraft? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh... God, I almost rolled stealth instead. That would have been bad. <laughs> um, 18 plus 4 for 22. Dabdathos, you think the spell that's being cast is um is a spell called uh um a stinking cloud. Ew. Gross. <laughs> uh what this spell does is create a bank of fog uh of it's almost like a fog. Um uh, except the vapors are nauseating to living creatures. All right. Um, Fantastic. Uh, so this, uh, I'm going to need uh, fort saves from the, uh, from all of you. And this is a, yep. Everybody give me a fort save, please. Oh, do I have any bonuses left? Good God. Let's check. That's a that's a six for me. That's a six for you. Okay. Yeah. 21. I just rolled another one. I would 20, just like you all to know. 21 from Gunner. Yeah, I don't think I do. So fortitude incoming. Uh, seven plus six is 13. Okay. And an 11 for me. Okay. So everybody but Gunner. Um, suddenly, uh, this, this, this rank smell washes over the room um the it's almost uh like rotten eggs or uh you know uh rotting cabbage leaves um so you guys start to get you start to get sick like it, your stomach is physically cramping up and uh you guys are uh become nauseated and i'm gonna need uh actually no not yet <clears throat> um, so you guys become nauseated and I'm going to give you that condition. Uh, so get me, bear with me one second. Peter Bricks. And Yay. me high. And now what exactly does nauseated do to us? I will tell you in about two seconds. One. Uh, Two. <laughs> Dabithas, you look up towards so the literal. sky and the, you think... You know, even through the, uh, um, the, you know, the fog in this room, um, that the rocks are beginning to, to loosen it. in the ceiling. <laughs> I knew that's where it was fuck. going. I was waiting for it. I'm like, he's getting creative <laughs> with this one. Wow. <laughs> um, give me a second. I'm looking up nauseated. Hold on. 
Uh, conditions. Uh... The rocks have to appear at least once a night. The <laughs> It's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, creatures within nausea condition experience stomach distress. Nausea creatures are unable to attack, cast spells, concentrate on spells, or do anything else requiring attention. The only action such a creature can take is a single move action per turn. What? <laughs> All right, Gunner. Good luck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do do we have like a save? Action. Do we have a save for this? You or just like... did. I mean, like each turn. Like, how do we get rid of it? Um, Depth Plus, you did roll particularly well on your not on your spellcraft for this. You think it? It's, you have to move out of the area of effect, and then it'll still affect you for a couple uh, for a little bit after you do that. Where? <laughs> There's nowhere to go. <laughs> Just... It's almost like you walked into a trap. It's almost like it. Ah. Uh. All right. Uh, <laughs> that brings us to. This guy and Dabdathas, you see a creature appear uh, next to you and he's going to try to slam you with his arm for AC 23. Wow, that actually cleared my AC of 22. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's almost okay. as if you walked into a trap. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. It's almost uh, as if they were prepared for us. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> so, Dab to Thoth, as the arm comes and swings at you, it's an unnaturally uh, uh, strong arm. Uh, it hits your shield, and your shield bashes into you, and you take five points of damage. Right now. Gunner, uh, the zombie is going to step up behind you, and he's going to try to slam you from behind. For AC 13. Miss, and he didn't buy me dinner. <laughs> That's true. Uh, did, that brings... Did he, did he at least tell me I was pretty, Mike? Um, I don't think he understands what pretty is anymore. <laughs> um, I'll, let it, I'll let it go this time. <laughs> let um, it go this time. <laughs> so, Eater Breaks, the, the one that is standing in front of you shuffles around... And kind of uh, and orients and Gunner, and he's going to swing his arm over his head, and he is going to try and smash Gunner in the face with his arm. Um, for AC, ooh. Excuse does, me. Um, <laughs> does AC eighteen confirm? Negative. Okay. Oh. So he, the zombie has rolled twenty plus six for twenty six. Um, and that was my excuse me. <laughs> um so he is going to hit gunner for uh 10 points of damage um so as the the unnaturally arm swings around gunner and hits you in the back of the head um it, it rocks you back and uh uh you know um it does 10 points of damage to you eat bricks it's your Got turn it. well considering there's not a whole lot i can do right now um i I would, oh, I would like to, if I five step, I don't take an attack of opportunity, correct? Right. Either your five foot step or if you take a full retreat, you do not take a attack of opportunity. Sweet. I'm taking a full retreat and going back up onto the stairs. All right. Roll a D4 for me, please. Oh, D4 plus one. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Five. <laughs> you are going to be nauseated for five more rounds, Eater Bricks. For the love of God! <laughs> <laughs> Dab to thoughts. Um. All right. I am going to do a new and unheard of maneuver called uh, withdrawal. Okay. And um, as I do so, I'm going to just yell, "Run away!" And I full re uh full retreat up the uh stairs okay i'm gonna put you on the uh, the stairs on the other uh, upper building so that's about i'm gonna go all the way to the top of the stairs okay all right so that would be right here yes okay all right when you're done hit that button do you do you want me to roll for how long i'm nauseated as well yes please yes thank you for reminding me i appreciate you're that. welcome Slightly yeah. less time. Also five. Did you <laughs> four? Did you roll oh, wait, plus one though? Plus one five. Yeah. five. <laughs> <laughs> this is brutal. God, that was rank. Uh, oh, um, 
<laughs> All right. Uh, when you're done, you can hit that button. All right. Enjoy me. Hi. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Um. Can can y'all y'all ain't even gonna help me before you run away and leave me to die? There's That's nothing cool. we can do. It's only what? we can only do move actions. As I'm nauseated, yeah, I can't cast. I can't do anything. Yeah. I'm gonna like be trying not to throw up on the stairs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so uh, the rules of, of nauseated. All I can do is move. All you can do is take one movement action. Yep. Well, I know what spell I'm taking next. All right. <laughs> um, so I will. Uh, yeah, I'll step out onto the stairs. I don't want to go too high though. I just want to pass. Okay, so you're gonna go. Okay, so if you do that, yeah, you'd be right there. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna shout to Gunner. Um, and Ida Bricks, I suppose, because she'll hear. But, uh, I'll say, Gunner, get out of there. I want to grease the stairs. Let's go. Good luck. Aren't you nauseated? Yeah, but for how many rounds? Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> Modifier plus one, D4. Three. Uh, two plus one is three. Okay. Well, aren't you lucky? <laughs> well, we could like lock up the doors and I could grease them later. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Eat a bricks, just go. Just go. <laughs> uh, when you're done, hit that button. Oh, yep, that's it. Gunner, your turn, sir. Um, I'm gonna rage. Okay. And I'm going to five foot there. Okay. And swing off on Captain Freshy. Because I ain't a quitter. Okay. <laughs> You're the We're only not one quitters. who's not nauseated. <laughs> we can't do anything. <laughs> Good luck really on your safety. <laughs> yes. Critical wow. confirmed. Nice. Wow. Roll a d20 nice. for me. Groin punch. Groin punch. <laughs> Is that 12 on the die? I think we... Did we just have that? Hold on. We did. But that would... No, that was, that was a critical fail, fail no, with the 12, okay, which yeah. was yeah. to crit yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Oddly, <laughs> enough, it's, oddly enough, it's the same thing on the crit table. I, <laughs> you crit yourself. <laughs> I, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> You double um, crit the enemy, but also crit yourself. You do two standard critical hits to the target. So no. max damage twice. Oh, dead. Chris Turner. <laughs> it's dead. At max damage? Yeah. Okay, so that's 15 points each turn, okay. or each swing. So, so Gunner... 30 points of damage. <laughs> so Gunner slices through the center of the creature, uh, completely cleaving it in two. Uh, entrails go flying... And it falls to the Jesus. to the ground dead. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. I like it. Oh righty. When you're done, hit that button. Smash button. that like button. <laughs> and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Bring that uh, notification bell. Edabrex, you see one of the zombies start to shuffle over towards you. And he is going to try and slam you in the face for AC 13. I vomit on him and say, no, thank you. Not today, <laughs> Satan. Not today. Not today, Satan. I mean, in their case, maybe today, Satan. <laughs> maybe. It's true. <laughs> um, uh, so, Edabrix. Uh, Edabrix and Edabrix, give me a perception, please. Edabrix, Edabrix, and Edabrix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eda Bricks and all her friends. Eda Bricks and all her friends. Okay. All me. Oh. That is a 12. Uh, Eda Bricks, give me a fort save, please. No. <laughs> That's a 19. Eda Bricks, as you're standing there. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. You feel the effects of a spell hit you. And, uh, but you're able to, uh, suddenly you're, you're, your vision dims and then your hearing dims. Um, but then you look around, you grit your teeth and you shake off the effects of the spell. So there. Um, 
this uh, gunner, as you watch coming around the corner, one of the uh, another one of the zombies walks up to you and is going to attempt to slam you in the face for AC twelve. That's a miss. Okay. And that brings us to this guy. He is going to the 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 zombie is going to push forward to you, and he's going to attempt to smash you in the face as well for AC thirteen. AC 13 gunner. That's a miss. Okay. Get a break. It's your turn. Well, I'm still nauseous, so I'm going to continue. Well, uh, I'm in a threatened square, right? Still? Uh, yes, you are. So I'm going to make a full retreat further up the stairs. Okay. And I'm going to go all the way up. <laughs> I'll put you there and you can move yourself as you need. Okay. Okay. So you popped out of the room. I, 5, yeah. 10, 15, 20. Yeah, you should be good. Okay. Yep. Um, and there we go. Dab to pass. Um, I'm going to move through the door at this point and, uh, kind of move around it and, uh, I'm going to let out all the vomit I have in my stomach. Okay. Everything that's left in your stomach is gone. Everything is just getting out of there. <laughs> Every single vomit. So yep. as you do so, uh, the man in the North, uh, I'm sorry, the Southwestern cell, uh, starts shrieking uh, uncontrollably and right. uh, yelling. And uh, <laughs> uh, with that, it's going to be Mihai's turn. <laughs> what have you done, man? This is such a mess. Oh, <laughs> it's a disaster. <laughs> it really <Gator>. is. <laughs> okay. Uh, how close is that zombie to me? Like, do I have straight line of sight? Like, is the map just oriented this way? Like, would the staircase actually be straight or does it come to a 90 degree uh, you and can... another 90? So, uh, if so. Right now, on your east, you could look down the steps and you could see him about 15 feet away. Uh, there's nothing. I Actually, can do you to can't see him. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. You cannot see him because he is currently in the mist. I'm, my apologies. No sweat. Um, there's nothing I can do to shake off the nauseated status. It's just time, right? I don't get another fourth save to try and overcome it, or no. how does that work? No. Okay. I retreat up the stairs. Um, and I guess I'll exit into the room where Davdathos is as well. Okay. Uh, then I get, when I'm here, can I do anything to lock this door up or like, does it open in or out? Like, can I just slam my body up against it and hope for the best? It opens in. It opens in. Yep. Okay. I'll just, uh, stand clear of it. Okay. When you're done, hit that button. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I am done. Gunner, your turn. All right. Um, Time to roust up and, and, and smoke some fools. Uh, we're going to go with a power attack, and I'm going to use a plus three. Uh, from... Got to look back at my notes. Sorry about this, Mike. <laughs> now, just I'll just use a plus one from Great Wolf from tonight. We'll call it easy. So we'll hit him first. Seven plus eleven for eighteen. Does that hit? Uh, it is. Does hit? Yep. Okay. And he's going to take 12 points of damage. Uh, so he goes down. The sword hits into his side. All right. And I will cleave to the next one. Directly south of me. With a natural roll of a one. For an automatic miss. Okay. Uh, roll in the fumble trap for me, please. Sure. That's a d20. Which will be a 14. Oh, 14's a good one. <laughs> Ooh, 14. I, I cut know. off my pinky toe. No. 
A forceful pop in your shoulder is heard as your arm goes limp. The arm used to make the attack is incapacitated for 1d4 plus 6 rounds. Roll it for me. Is that a two-handed weapon? No, it's a long sword. Ooh, lucky. Yeah, but that means you can't use sword and board. All right, so that's a... Three plus one is four rounds. Okay. Um. No, no, no. One d four plus six rounds. Nine rounds. Oh, holy shit! Yep. You want to join us, pukers upstairs? <laughs> no, I'm good. I got this. Don't worry about it. Y'all, y'all go hide. It's okay. <laughs> All right. So, Gunner, which wep- which item are you dropping to the floor right now? Um. Well, it's the one that I made the attack with, so I guess so I gotta have the long sword. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you're done, hit that button. There you go. All right. So the zombie on the steps. Uh, everybody upstairs, I'm gonna need you to give me a perception, please. Don't worry. We already know the room is full of vomit. <laughs> 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 Uh, 11 plus 13 for 24. 14 plus 8 for 22. Uh, 13. Dabdathas and Edabrix, uh, you hear the shumble, sh- shambling steps of uh, a creature coming uh, coming up the steps towards you. Oh, God. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wiping puke from his face on his sleeve. <laughs> no more. Gunner, no I'm going to need a perception from you, please. <laughs> And that'll be a 11. Gunner, you hear the sounds of a spell being cast. <laughs> and with that, we're going to end this week's episode of the Tabletop Tavern. Get out of here. Spellcraft, spell please spellcraft before I forget. No. Next week. Next week. Uh, <laughs> make a note. Make a note. <laughs> Damn it. God, this is such a mess. <laughs> what a disaster of an encounter. Uh, I feel like it's crazy. I feel like we could we could wreck these guys, but like I walked in there so confident, and you were like, "Yeah, you know, you detect magical signals. There's multiple of them." I was like, "Oh, perfect! I'm gonna sit back, I'm gonna channel energy until they're all dead, and then next thing you know, I'm vomiting until next week." Sticking clouds, OP. It really is. God, <laughs> is it a conjuration spell? Because I could really do some good with that. <laughs> look it up. I'm gonna look it up if that's okay, because I might end up taking it anyway. But... <laughs> Too bad you couldn't combine it like with your uh, infabulate, and then you could have really bad smelling glitter. Ooh, oh, that's that. kind of beastly. I like that. <laughs> I was thinking like that with black tentacles. That's like, that. That's the combo hold, right hold there. In place, and then they can't do anything. Yeah. yeah, they literally can't do anything at that point. Would it affect our party? Like if I yes. casted it, would yes. it affect our party? Absolutely. So our party can't go in and do anything okay. about it. Correct. You're right. Oh, that kind of sucks. But but the minute they run out of it, we get free swings off on them. So let's yeah. do it, baby. All okay. we gotta do is stay right outside of it. And I can dispel it when I want, right? Which uh, which one? This thinking cloud. Like look if it I up. You gotta theoretically you, take it. Yeah, I, I'm okay. not sure off the top of my head if that's dispelled. No sweat. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. Everybody, thank you so much for coming out and joining us tonight for this week's episode of the Tabletop Tavern. Um, we are currently in discussions. We are, we might move this to a time slot during the week. Um, and we're trying to figure out a time. We're trying to come together as a team and find a different time uh, to do so. Uh, we think I'd it might- like to roll for sense motive. Roll. <laughs> Get out. Uh, it's just, it. uh, hold on. It didn't roll on the thing. Oh, now I'm moving my whole character sheet. This isn't going well. Uh, that is a 12 plus eight for 20. Uh, you think I'm being honest. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> uh, um, I'd like to detect evil. <laughs> <laughs> that you automatically pass. Yeah. Then you know. Um, so we are investigating at a time if we can move the if we can get this show during the week um, in a little bit earlier. So it's more accessible to a lot more people. Um, one of the feedback that we have gotten is that it runs too late for everybody to be able to join it. Hence, we're at least going to move it on Sundays to 8 p.m. Um, if not, if we can't get it to go during the week. Um, I uh, would really like to. The more we can spread our audience with the people out there who enjoy TTRPG content, it's never a bad thing. You know, 
Um, but I wanted to thank you guys as always for coming out and supporting us. Um, it's, it's always a great time. If you're coming out for the first time tonight, uh, give us a follow, come back and follow and check us out next Monday. Also tomorrow night is neural nexus zero. This is episode two of our savage world cyberpunk adventure, uh, set in a 1980s Boston. Um, if you want to get caught up on all our content, tales from the tavern, neural nexus zero tabletop tavern, and very soon to be coming tabletop tavern too. Uh, the best way to do so is at howinerd.com. Howinerd.com has is a central repository for all our media, our gear, and shortly it's going to be great resource for our stream team. How I Nerd is partnered. Uh, we got sponsored by a partner, and we are created a uh, we have created a stream team uh, to uh, work with other tabletop tab, uh, tabletop uh, RPG streamers out there uh, to 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 elevate together. Uh, so you're going to be able to shortly find uh, resources there to help you as well. Uh, Cast, what are you thinking and what is your character thinking? I'm going to start with Eda Bricks first. And I, I think I have an idea what you're thinking, but I just want to take, can I, do you mind if I take a quick guess at it real quick? Be my guest. Okay. I think it's something like. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. You are not that far off. Okay. That, it, it's a little more like. <laughs> Ralph. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so... Um. Yeah. Um, so let's see. She's yeah, she's a little uh a little tired of feeling nauseous. She does not like this feeling at all. Um and uh she's mad that that even happened and that they all had to retreat because that Who? Just... Huh? Who? Uh, oh, excuse me, Mr. I didn't start vomiting violently. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and the only thing that the rest of us could do is move. Um, so, uh, yeah. So she, so she's just ready to like be done with feeling sick. And, and she also is really like, I want to figure out what's going on here. Cause yeah, this is not good. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Mihai. Um. I'm not stoked that I'm coming up against something that I'm essentially useless against. Uh, and it's, you know, hit our party pretty hard. Uh, I don't have a great fort save, <laughs> so I'm not going to be very good against these things. If it was a wool save, I may be in a better shape, but this has really, really messed up the party. So I'm a little bit worried about that, especially where it lasts so long, like one d4 plus one rounds when you exit the cloud that's crazy uh so right now i'm in uh fallback redundancy plan as in like maybe lock myself in the cell with the nice old blind man and just like, <laughs> wait until i stop puking and then shoot acid splash through the holes in the cell bars at the zombie until it inevitably dies uh yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm at, man. I don't really know what to do. Dab to thoughts. Uh, so Dab to thoughts is thinking this is a bunch of bullshit. And uh, I'm thinking this is a bunch of bullshit. So I only have one thing for you. And it's this. <laughs> and that's all I got. That's all you got? All right, guys, thank you so much for coming out this uh, this uh, Sunday night to hang out with us. And while we get to nerd out and play D&D, &D, um, I really appreciate everybody, as always, supporting this community and making it, uh, uh, you know, it's such a welcoming place for everybody to come and hang out and uh, make fun of Decider. Um, so, uh, again, we love you guys. And, uh, you know, at this time of the night, we like to find the target to raid and uh, go go spread the love around. Uh, so that other people can, uh, um, you know, that we can, we can show the, you know what, actually, oh, he's just about to get off. I was, I know who we're going to raid. We're going to raid a friend of mine that I haven't, uh, talked to a while. Uh, she's a, a streamer. She does variety content and, uh, we're going to kick that off in the meantime, I'm going to kick it over to the ending screen and, uh, we're going to, uh, uh, we, I want to give you guys credit where credit is due, but I'm going to kick this raid off and we'll talk to you tomorrow night for Neural Nexus Zero.